the 4th of July, it's hot dogs and hamburgers, fireworks and friends. It's honor and commitment for duty and sacrifice. It's the freedom to disagree loudly. It's apple pie and swimming pools, picnic baskets and suntan lotion. And of course... to Minute Maid Park in Houston, Texas on this July 4th for all the ceremonies leading up to the National Anthem, which is a moment away as we celebrate this nation's independence. The colors are presented by the E.L. Fur High School Junior ROTC, and the National Anthem is being performed by the 36th Infantry Division Band's Soldiers Chorus with both teams lining the foul lines and the colors now being presented around second base there. Fourth, it's coming your way from Minute Maid Park next.
Comcast Sportsnet brings you Houston Astros baseball today on this July 4th with the military in attendance and a big part of all the ceremonies in the pregame portion. It is the Houston Astros against the Tampa Bay Rays today. It'll be game four of this four game series and the finale of the homestands. We've had great ceremonies beforehand. This is the Astros first first home game on July 4th since 2007 and welcome in everybody Bill Brown and Alan Ashby happy July 4th to you a great day for families uh, for celebration of this country's freedom and now baseball with Jordan Lyles going Jordan Lyles gets that opportunity first off it's an honor and a privilege to be an American and be here today with so many defending our rights Jordan Lyles will defend the rights of the Astros after a win last night for the club Jordan of course had that rough one hitting Howie Kendrick, a rough outing against the Angels. That came on the heels of a very rough one in Chicago against the Cubs. Jordan Lyles' last two starts after seven very good ones have been rough. It's been a real night and day issue for Jordan Lyles this year. He's been good at night, 3-0 and in ERA, down around the two mark in day games. He's had a rough time, 1-3 and in the ERA, up over the seven mark. Uh, you can see overall 4-3 and on the season, 399. The uh, good and acceptable ERA, uh, but certainly some numbers he would like to continue to work at and get back in that positive direction. And he'll try to lead the Astros to a split of this four game series. We'll have baseball in just a moment. Astros baseball on Comcast Sportsnet is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com and by your local Toyota dealer. Toyota, let's go places. The Houston Astros ready to go here on the 4th of July and very excited to play the sport that they love in front of the fans here on this special day in the summer. And they look sharp in their patriotic style hats. Both of the guys, many of the guys talking about how excited they were to wear those as well. And Change, changes to the lineup today, getting some rest for Matt Dominguez. And for more on the lineups, we go upstairs to Bill Brown and Alan Ashby. Happy 4th, guys. Happy 4th, Julia. You're wearing your red, white, and blue in the spirit of things. Yeah, I love the new caps. It's, a, it's one of those days that really stands out. And as we mentioned, the Astros have not had a July 4th game here at home since 07. So it's nice to have that opportunity again. Lineup cards are being exchanged around home plate right now. And the Astros are taking the field. And they are trying to gain a split of this four game series. They're two and six on this homestand. They've dropped five of their last six games. Jordan Lyles headed to the mound trying to do something similar to what Bud Norris did last night to try to reverse things. And Bud stopped the five game losing streak with a four to one win. 
Seven solid innings, allowing six hits and a run. There's the first baseman, Chris Carter. And here's the lineup now for the visiting Tampa Bay Rays. Desmond Jennings leads it off in center field. It's Matt Joyce in left field. The number three hitter is former Astro farmhand Ben Zobrist at second base. Evan Longoria is the cleanup man, the designated hitter. With Houstonian James Loney at first base. Will Myers in right field. Kelly Johnson at third base. Jose Lobaton the catcher. Yunel Escobar at shortstop. And we talked about him on the mound for the Astros. 22-year-old right-hander Jordan Lyles. He's had a pretty good season to this point. The last couple of games have been struggles. Overall, though, at home, 3-2, 474, the ERA, where he has struggled on the road. Much better ERA, just over the three mark. A 1-1 one and one record for Jordan. And again, I think the big thing for Jordan, two of them, trying to turn things around after two rough starts and also trying to win during the day where he has had a miserable time this year. Maybe he got up at 5 a.m. Who knows, actually. Well, maybe that uh, turns it around defensively. Trying to get the job done. Jason Castro behind the plate around the infield. Right to left, Chris Carter, Jose Altuve, Jake Elmore, and Brett Wallace. In the outfield, Brandon Barnes. Flanked by Jimmy Paredes in right and Mark Krause in left field. A different look for Bull Porter, and he wants to keep everybody in the mix. He wants to give Krause a start. Doesn't want him sitting for days on end. Wallace. Getting the opportunity at third base. Matt Dominguez getting a rest. And now it is Fred Wallace getting set at third base for the leadoff man, Desmond Jennings. Jennings is on a five game hitting streak 258, 10 homers, 34 runs batted in. Five hits and 12 at bats in this series, including a homer in game two of this series. And that was Tuesday night when he drove in four runs. Fastball is away, and that's ball one with Jim Reynolds, the home plate umpire for the game today. Jordan Lyles' fastball has been much less effective in those last two games. It's John Hirschbeck, James Hoy, and Bob Davidson joining Reynolds on this proof. That's in the air to left center field and a long run for Brandon Barnes. Barnes looking up and that ball is crushed. It stays in play. It's a leadoff double for Jennings. He almost got it high enough to get a leadoff homer, but instead settling for his 20th two base hit of the year. Jordan Lyles tried to find with the first fastball that lower corner down and away on Jennings did not get the call and then came back toward the plate left it up a bit Jennings who has been hitting the fastball very well here in the series almost launches one so the Rays have a leadoff runner at second base and it's Matt Joyce batting Joyce comes up at 244 he has 14 homers 31 runs batted in two for seven in this series. He snapped an 0 for 20 last night with an infield hit going two for three with a walk. That's strike one. The batting average against Jordan Lyles fastball his last two starts is 458. And Jennings just picked on another heater. Strike one to Joyce with Zobrist on deck. And that one's low. It's one and one. Jordan had been doing so well at mixing his pitches. And setting up the off speed stuff with his fastball prior to those last two games you mentioned, Ash. And he had a 10 strikeout game uh, at Seattle June 12th in seven innings, seven shutout innings. That's a broken bat looper that lands in right field. Here's Jennings coming to a stop sign from Tom Foley. Throw from Jimmy Paredes to the cutoff man. Zobrist with a single, it's first and third. Just a splat job right here off the end of the bat. And once again for a third straight start now Lyles has to deal with some early troubles and see if he can minimize the damage here in the first inning. Joyce hit one that one near the end of the bat didn't he. One of those innings where you hope you can allow just one run and get back at it and, and start mowing down these Tampa Bay bats. So Joyce gets the hit now Zobris 265 five homers 44 runs batted in double play depth for Elmore and Altuve. Zobris takes it. There's ball one to him. Zobris with 20 doubles is a good threat for an extra base hit, not necessarily a home run. He's hit 312 with men in scoring position this year. He's one for 13 in this series. That one hit was a double, and he's driven in two. Well, Porter, Doug Brocale hoping for a turnaround here from Lyles with first and third, nobody out. Love the white hats. 
One and one to count. Zobris leads the American League in walks since 2009 with 397. Miles is facing the Rays for the first time in his career. Jordan with a lifetime record of 11 wins, 23 losses, and a 4.93 earned run average. And the throw goes over to first. Joyce has six deals and seven tries. Rays have won seven of their last ten. They're headed back home for a ten game homestand after this game today. Joe Madden's club 45 and 46 and a half games off the lead pace being set by Boston in the AL East. And that's hit foul. No, that's that's a ball to left field. I didn't see that one coming off the bat very well and that's going to be out number one. Not deep enough as Krause gets there for the catch. Ben Zobris has been popping up a number of pitches here in this series. Rare for this very fine player, but a key first out now. And now that double play possibility with a guy who isn't able to run well, Evan Longoria, presents itself. Kraus got behind it, came in for the throw, and came up and got Wallace around the right shoulder. Now with first and third occupied and one down, it's Evan Longoria. Wallace is available to play goalie for any club that may need his <laughs> services at some point. Longoria with 17 homers has 47 driven in and a 297 average with a couple of hits in this series. That was in game two of the series. He looks at that one and it's ball one. Longoria definitely the home run threat in this lineup with 17. Just saw one of the rare sliders from Jordan Lyles. Usually fastball, curveball, change up is quite good. Good tight slider there. That one's off the end of the bat, and it's a one ball, one strike count to Evan Longoria. He's been bothered by plantar fasciitis in his right foot. Evan's 27 years old. He was an all star in three years in a row, 08 through 2010. And again, has put together a strong first half of the season. He's eighth in the league in total bases. Throw goes over to first, and that keeps Joyce close, keeps the double play a possibility for the Astros. And the way Longoria is having problems running right now, that is a distinct possibility. He's bounced into eight double plays. Fouls it back and it's one and two. You can see Jordan Lyles has an ability to curb the possibilities of the running game. Nice quick move toward the plate. And this Tampa Bay club will run and they'll run with anybody in the lineup. They'll also hit with men in scoring position. Joe Madden's bunch hitting 291 to lead the American League with men in scoring position. They hit only 243 in those situations last year. Ninth major league year for Joe Madden. Two and two. He was very complimentary after last night's four to one Houston win about the work of Bud Norris and the hitting of Chris Carter. I think Bud Norris is starting to impress a lot of folks. Well, there was quite a bit of talk on network TV about him after the game last night. It's a slow grounded at third. Wallace coming in. No play at home. He goes to first base and it's one nothing raise. Longoria with the ground out. Getting his 48th run batted in with Jen Jennings scoring and Joyce moving to second base. Now things just not going entirely Lyle's way right now. Yes he does get the out but he gives up the run. Gets the ground ball he wants. But so slowly hit that all they can get is the play at first base with the run scoring. It's a bit of an unlucky inning for Lyles, even though he gave up a thunderbolt by Jennings. The choice hit was a looping broken bat type single to right field. And that ball, had it been hit sharply at Wallace on one bounce, could have been a double play. Now James Loney, he's put together a 14-game hitting streak. That's ball one to Loney. During the 14-game streak, he's hit 411. 
318 overall, nine homers, 42 runs batted in, five for 11 in this series. Maloney is two for three lifetime against Jordan Lyles. Only takes a look at it and it's 2 0. You have a guy this hot, not a bad time to pitch around to some extent, try to see if you can get him fishing for close pitches. Will Myers on deck, a right handed batter. That's in for a strike, and that makes it 2 and 1 for Lyles. Lyles has walked 19 in 68 innings. It's not very often that you'll see such a night and day issue as what Lyles has had this year with the numbers at nighttime. Very good 3 0, 1 and 3 during the day with a huge ERA. 3 and 1. Did you ever have a pitcher on any of your clubs who had that kind of a split that you remember? Well, I'm sure I did. Uh, whether I was keenly aware of it, and and I would probably wonder right now, does Jason Castro know what these numbers say, day versus night? I think those are numbers you you typically ignore. In this case, however, five starts in the day, five at night for Jordan, and boy, it just the numbers say he's been completely Jekyll and Hyde. Ten earned runs allowed at night, twenty during the day games. Now Will Myers after the walk to Loney steps up at 273 with three homers 11 runs batted in. So you're suggesting that the Chicago Cubs are probably not thinking about a trade for Jordan Lyles with all the day games they played. Well they probably weren't all that impressed with what they saw in that one day game and yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't imagine the Cubs are looking to acquire a whole lot right now. Fly ball right field corner Jimmy Paredes comes over has a long run to get. To where he watches it go out of play. Yeah, I wonder though in the next 10 starts, if Lyles were to get five in the day and five at night, would the numbers reverse themselves? Right. The fans have come well equipped for play today. And for Lyles, it might mean a little bit of a change in routine if this kind of a trend continues. But you know a lot of guys are just attuned to night games. That's what they have the majority of the time. One ball one strike. What do you know about some of these sleeves that uh, some of the Rays players are using. I noticed. Will Myers has one on the right arm. Looks like Kelly Johnson waiting in the on deck circle has one on his right arm as well. Nothing. Um, Thanks for the insight. Must be. <laughs> must be a medical reason for it right. Yeah they're. All over the place. Okay. Ground ball third. Wallace backs up. Whoop. No play at third. Sales one over to first base. He got caught a little bit between hops. Was able to regroup and get Myers. So it's one run on two hits, two men left, and an early run for the Rays.
Well, you see a lot of colors displayed on a day like this. There's a flag indoors. The Rays got the first run of this ball game. Now the Astros, who have lost six in a row on July 4th, and Bobby Dynamite is waving the colors. Hope that they can get on the board against the young right-hander Chris Archer here. He's 24 years old. Here's the lineup for both Porter. Jose Altuve, second base. Brent Wallace, third base. Jason Castro, catcher. Chris Carter, first base. He had the big night last night with two homers, four runs batted in. Carlos Pena, designated hitter. Mark Kraus, left field. Brandon Barnes, center field. Jimmy Paredes, right field. Jake Elmore, shortstop. Chris Archer, as Brownie says, on the hill, two and three, and a 440 ERA. Young right hander in his second year in the big leagues has allowed about a hit an inning. He's walking far too many picking up some strikeouts in the opponent's batting average against it 248 four dingers allowed in that brief span. So the Astros would love to jump on this youngster early. Jose Altuve first man up. He takes and there's ball one from Archer. Altuve at 287 has three homers. He's driven in 27. With a 324 on base average. Jose one for nine in this series. 188 on this homestand. Archer deals, it's a strike, and it's one and one. Archer was drafted by Cleveland in the fifth round in 06, traded to the Cubs. And then Tampa Bay got him in the Matt Garza trade prior to 2011. He saw a little bit of major league time for the Rays last year. And upright. Type pitching style gets a call there and it's one and two for Archer. Why does he look like a throwback player on the hill? Sure does. With that kind of unicolor cap and the socks and all that's going on. Mm -hmm. Fly ball right field corner and that's slicing away and into the seats. One and two remains a count for Altuve. Another catch down the right field line. There are the colorful socks. We understand a very well read, intelligent young man raised by his grandparents. We have high hopes for him with his high velocity heater. Mm. Did he swing? He checked his swing. John Hirschbeck with the call. It's two and two. Good looking pitch, too. Last night we saw a consistently semi tight strike zone. Is that ball high enough? At the plate, I would say yes. And it looked like it got some plate. Yeah, I thought maybe the pitch was in the strike zone, swing or no swing. That is oh. high for a ball, wow. and it's three and two. Wow. Yep. If you are Chris Archer right now, you're thinking, where is the thimble that I need to hit in this strike zone? Is that ball too high? Was the previous one too low? You know what the umpire might say? Well, it dropped after it crossed the plate. Well, then remember that on the low ones. In the air to shallow right field. Zobris going for it. Sliding play by the right fielder, Myers. Will Myers takes one away in shallow right. Heck of a play. And Will Myers has been making his mark early with these Tampa Bay Rays. They've given the youngster a shot. And he's not tearing it up right now, but he's not embarrassing himself for the club. And when you can make plays like this, likely better than some of the guys that maybe have been a part of the club. You can see him calling for it. And Zobras peeled off at the last instant. There's that sleeve again we were talking about. Yeah. They are wearing sleeves. Only one. There's strike one to Wallace. 128 for Brett with one homer, five runs batted in. On the throwing arm, it seems to be. Is that the trend we're picking up? We used to wear what we called power bands, the wristbands. Maybe this is a, a, a power sleeve. High fastball makes it 0-2 to Wallace. Brett Wallace wearing one of those sleeves as well. We'll have to check around and see what this is all about. The latest craze. Wallace has hit in five of his six games since being recalled from Oklahoma City. Archer gets one in for strike three call. At 96, two outs. That is a good looking arm. And there we saw a strike call that wasn't just in that little thimble in the heart of the plate. So I say thank goodness in that regard. Jason Castro comes up next. Castro at 265 with 11 homers has 27 runs batted in. 
Will he be an all star? We'll find out Saturday night. The teams are announced. He's tied for first among American League catchers in extra base hits with 33. That's strike one at 96 from Archer. Archer's slider has actually been a much more effective pitch than his fastball. Fastball average is 95, but the batting average against his fastball is 290. That's laced. A liner out to right center. Myers diving, and whoa! He almost got caught back a little bit on his heels, but he laid out. And on that hard hit liner, it's out number three as Myers goes to work and right for two of those three outs. It's one nothing Rays after one. Miller time later in today's game brought to you by Miller Light and they are juggling they are getting ready also at Eleanor Tinsley Park in downtown Houston for the big Freedom Fest tonight a big concert fireworks it's going to be quite a celebration tonight in downtown Houston and probably a lot of people will go directly from here to there. Martina McBride and Cheryl Crow to perform no need to say more. Nope. Kelly Johnson comes up. He's leading it off in the second inning. 239, 11 homers, 39 runs batted in for Johnson. Three hits and eight at bats in this series for Johnson. Around to bunt, and he moves the bat back and takes ball one. Yeah, we could see these Rays hitters challenge Brett Wallace a bit as the third baseman today. It's two balls, no strikes. Johnson had a two hit game Tuesday night, had another hit and a walk in last night's game. He taps it to second, Jose Altuve to his right. That's one out for Jordan Lyle. The Rays have played well outside the American League East. They're 25 and 16. Inside the AL East, it's a very competitive story, and they're 20 and 24. Jose Lobaton has had back to back three hit games. He's gone six for eight in his last two starts. Lobaton checks in at 285. He has four homers, 19 runs batted in. He looks at that one and it's ball one to Lobaton. He became the first Rays catcher with back to back three hit games since Deonna Navarro in August of 07. That's in for a strike, and it's one and one for Jordan Lyle, shooting for win number five of the year. Lobaton is 25. He's from Venezuela. He taps this to first base. Carter tossing to Lyle. Two down. And now Escobar will bat. 
Astros leave after this game for Arlington, Texas. Either Lobatone doesn't run all that well or he wasn't highly motivated on this play. He took his time. Don't like to see this. That changeup gets the roll over and the ground out and the frustration right there. Flip of the bat. Okay, we'll go a little bit harder. Routine plays can still be run out. Pete Rose did it. Certainly did. Yunel Escobar is the batter. There's strike one. Escobar, 244, has six homers, 33 runs batted in. If Pete Rose hit a grounder back to the pitcher, he ran just as hard as if he hit a single to right center field. That was a headache slider thrown there by Jordan Lyles, apparently. And he drops a bigger breaking ball on him, and it's 0-2. So should he set up his fastball with his breaking stuff since the fastball has been getting hit the last few starts? I think it's valid while the fastball is being hit. And I think it's always valid anyway. I, I think that if, if you can just simply leave hitters not feeling assured that they're going to get this pitch or that in a given situation, then you've got something on your side. When you have a fastball as good as Jordan Lyles and the numbers are as high against it as they are, something's not right. Barnes in center takes care of out number three. It's one to nothing, Rays, after one and a half. We go to the bottom of the second. One nothing Rays on top. Time for our AT&T tweet of the day. Chris Carter has 17 home runs for the Astros this year. Keep in mind Justin Maxwell led the Astros last year with 18. That's from Brian McTaggart. And Brian's all over stuff all the time. Yeah, Chris Carter with those two home runs last night has uh, dialed it up again. Oh. In fact, the Rays manager Joe Madden even tweeted about Chris Carter after the game last night. That's rare. Man strong. Now Carter takes, and there's ball one. 17 homers, as mentioned. 44 runs batted in to tie Matt Dominguez for the club high. He's hitting 231 with an OPS of 791 for Carter. Three for 10 in this series. Swings over the breaking ball there. And it's a 1 1 count. I was thoroughly impressed with that second home run by Carter, the three run job that eventually won it for the Strohs against Jake McGee, a left hander who simply strikes out most of the guys that come to the plate against him. A couple of strikes on him. It's 2 and 1. Carter's hit 315 since the 15th of June, with seven doubles, four homers, nine runs batted in.
That's his fastball for strike three call after setting him up with breaking balls. Strikeout number two for Archer. Julia. Hey Brownie, Carlos Pena coming up now and playing against his former manager in Joe Madden. And yesterday he told me he sees a lot of Bo Porter in Joe Madden. There's a lot of similarities there, including how they're both very innovative and they're not afraid to try something new, Brownie. Yeah, and uh, tweeting about the opposition player who beat you with a couple of home runs the night before. That's quite different for Joe Madden last night, but he's a very nice guy and very well respected. Has some different methods that are working. Carlos Pena with eight homers, 25 runs batted in. If anybody ever tossed the book to, to Joe Madden when he took this job, he immediately tossed it into the fire because he, he just uh, he does it his, his own way. Yeah. Give him credit for that. He's not taking a template left by the previous skipper. And we're still checking into these sleeves the players are wearing today because it seems to be unanimous. It's no balls, two strikes to Carlos Pena. Carlos missed a couple of games Sunday and Monday and went 0 for 3. In his first uh, time back in the starting lineup in last night's game. Well, it is a, a patriotic look, and I assume it's involved with the 4th of July. That's what we're guessing. Looks good. Red, white, and blue. Looking at it, seems that all the players are wearing them. Foul back, still 0 2 with Mark Krause on deck. Good peek into the glove of Archer as he gripped that change up. Took about 9, 10 miles an hour off of that pitch from his fastball. It would be uncomfortable for the pitcher. Archer is not wearing it. He's thrown only 20 pitches. Race starters have been conserving their pitches in this series. Foul back, still 0 and 2. Well, Archer makes it look easy on that heater. Not a big guy. Does it make a difference if a guy has the big body, the big body pitcher that all the teams want to be able to get? But sometimes it's the, the slightly built guy or the short guy that will have the big time arm. Upstairs to Pena. One and two to the Tampa Bay Rays all time home run leader. Matt Moore won his 11th Monday night here. Seven shutout innings for Moore. He threw 101 pitches. But David Price was much more efficient than that with his seven shutout Tuesday. 70 pitches. Pena checked his swing on appeal to third, and it's two and two. And then last night, starter Roberto Hernandez. Through six innings, he gave up three runs. He needed only 78 pitches. Archer's falling into line. Does the bat go through? Nice job holding it back just at that last instant. Archer has thrown 58% fastballs so far this year. That's a foul tip strikeout on the slider. That's strikeout number three. I think when when pitchers the starting pitchers in particular are just throwing strike after strike as David Price certainly did at some point you just have to come out of that game plan that says let's work him deep because with excellent stuff and what today's stuff by Archer fits in that category if, if you're going to fall behind you're going to put yourself in a tough spot. Mark Kraus got his first major league hit last Tuesday night it was a double. He's at 091. For 12 at bats. There's strike one. Julia has a report on the sleeves. Yes, Brownie. Uh, just used for compression, trying to keep the throwing arm warm, and they look cool. Ah, <laughs> boy, does that ever look nice with orange? Yeah, that is a nice evening gown kind of look. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So you need some white gloves. It's keeping my mic holding hand warm. I, I well, want to know who's sharing. <laughs> I don't know. I've, I just I got one from Oka. To okay. Help me out. They look cool. Yeah, they do. Look at the Stop. guns on on her. I know. Yeah, she's been lifting. <laughs> Foul ball. 
one and two. Julia, you know, that might help you uh, as the second half of the season rolls along. Come August, the dog days of August. People are looking for something to give them a little lift. You're right. Maybe it's the sleep. I might need one for both arms and both legs by the time the season. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's a long season, yeah. Her ability to get the big interview will not slow down at all. No. That's a little flare out of play. Still a one ball, two strike count. We'll be joined by the Astros' third round draft choice, Kent Emanuel, in a few minutes. He has signed and is here today with his parents. He's getting ready to head out on his pro career. Lefty from North Carolina. Mark Krause, the native of Deschler, Ohio. We went to Ohio University trying to become the first Astro base runner here in the second inning. They have really been in a rough patch with their offense recently. That one's in the air and the third baseman goes back for it. Kelly Johnson into foul territory to make it six straight retired by Archer and a one nothing lead for the Rays through two. Well, joining us, the Astros' third-round draft choice, University of North Carolina, left-handed pitcher, just signing, getting ready to head out in his pro career. How does it feel? Feels good. It's exciting. Uh, you know, getting to do all this stuff. It's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. Are you aware that you have to do a, a TV interview every day now the rest of your <laughs> life? Oh gosh, I hope not. <laughs> see. <laughs> Desmond Jennings, the batter, he opened the game with a double to left center. As you watch the caliber of baseball here, of course, you've been watching Major League Baseball your whole life, probably, right? Yeah, definitely. Uh, growing up near Atlanta, a lot of Braves games. So you had uh, some outstanding teams to follow and excellent pitching down through the years. That's a shot toward right field, and Jimmy Paredes in to glove it. That's out number one. Is the defensive play one thing that would stand out for you watching baseball at this level? Compared to the lower levels, uh, yeah, definitely. I think all phases, game, you know, obviously is a step up. Um, yeah, but definitely they make the plays look so easy uh, at this level that you know lower levels might not be able to make as easy. What kind of strengths do you do you bring now as you embark upon pro ball? Uh, I think you know, as a pitcher, I don't have one thing in particular that stands out. I think that in itself is a strength. I'm able to throw any pitch in any count. And, uh, you know, just that's what I do. I just like to pitch. What uh, what velocity fastball do you work from? Uh, I usually sit around the 90 mark. I don't. I'm not a flamethrower, but uh, you know, obviously that's something that's improved every year, and I don't plan on uh, you know that stop. And hopefully, it'll keep going up. Big time command guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I like to throw strikes and uh, get ahead of the count, and that's usually what you know, leads me to being successful. Top ball, first base side by Matt Joyce, one and two. Uh, as you have watched major league pitchers now, as you've developed, 
at North Carolina. Is there anybody you think you might be close to in style who's currently in the big leagues? Uh, I don't know. I, it's t that's a tough question. That's one that I've never really, uh, you know, my answer is not really anyone in particular that I try and, you know, emulate. I think uh, take pride in being myself. Mm -hmm. That's probably the best way to do it, two and two. Who's had an impact on you in terms of learning your craft? Uh, has there been a pitching coach? Who has maybe uh, made an impact on you, uh, changed your thinking in some area that you can recall? Uh, yeah, I think I think all the coaches growing up have had, you know, a little impact here and there. Uh, you know, I've learned different pitches from from different coaches, and uh, you know how to attack hitters from different coaches. Obviously, Coach Forbes North Carolina has helped me with that too. So, uh, yeah, I think uh, just everyone just kind of come together like a big melting pot almost. Mm -hmm. What have you been warned about stepping into pro ball uh, to watch for to take care of your arm whatever it may be uh, Just in terms of this fall. I've, I've been told not to rush it. Uh, that's what they said uh, You know don't try and get back on the mound and, and let it rip too fast go ahead and take your time and you know I had a pretty heavy workload uh, This spring so they're not rushing me uh, to get back on the mound right away So it was taps one foul well your battery mate at North Carolina Brian Holberton is already out there uh, at Greenville, mm -hmm. and he was the Astros' ninth round pick. So that's uh, an interesting pairing. Yeah, isn't it? yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, you know, to have him picked by the same organization, and a couple kids on my Cape Cod uh, summer team were picked by Astros too. So uh, you know, we have some familiar faces in the organization. It's pretty cool. Is this something you've been aspiring to all your life? Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, wanting to play as professional uh, growing up is obviously. You know, every ball player's dream, and you know, to be one step closer to the big leagues today, it's pretty cool. As you watch a Jordan Lyles, does it uh, jog anything in you? Uh, maybe uh, a feeling of I can do that, or boy, I've got some work to to take care of. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, seeing him, especially how young he is. Uh, it's kind of encouraging, you know, letting you know that, you know, this could be done and, uh, you know, hopefully it's something I'm able to do in the future. You talked about the heavy innings load and the Astros, mm -hmm. of course, are going to be very careful in managing that. So uh, you've been shut down for what, about three weeks now? Yeah, uh, I haven't picked up a baseball since uh, my last game in the in the College World Series. Mm -hmm. So what do you think, uh, two or three weeks, uh, just, just getting into a throwing uh, program again? I'm not exactly sure. Uh, you know, I leave tomorrow to go to Florida, and I'm going to start the throwing program there. So, uh, you know, I guess tomorrow I'll have a better idea of, of what the deal is going to be. Well, you would just miss Mark Appel. He's just leaving Florida. Yeah. <laughs> but you'll meet him somewhere down the line. Yeah. But a very good draft, bringing him top uh, college pitching talent. And uh, certainly a pleasure to have you in the organization, and we wish you all the best in your career. Yeah, Tom. Thanks for having me. Thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. one nothing race. <laughs>
Kraus is definitely a sleeper. I think he's lying about not not being able to put down some hot dogs. I mean, is that a question? It's Corporat. You know, he he would he would he would dominate everyone. Do you think he could win? Oh yeah, I'm a spread killer. I'm a spread killer. We welcome you back. Speaking of dogs, Friday, July 19th is Dollar Dog Day at Minute Maid Park. Watch the Astros face off against the Seattle Mariners at 710 and enjoy $1 hot dogs all game long. Top it off with post-game fireworks. Call one 877 astros or visit astros.com to get your tickets now. Guys, you know Joey Chestnut won winning, or he ate 69 hot dogs. It's a world record. It broke his own record. It's crazy. I didn't realize he went that high, Julia. Thanks for the update. And uh, <laughs> Yeah, but was he a spread killer? Oh no. Only Corp. Brandon Barnes broken bat. And the pitcher falls down. Archer gets up and throws him out. Well, he's quick <laughs> getting to his feet. <laughs> and that's out number seven in a row as Archer turns in a play. Eaters quick to the plate. And yeah. My bad stuff right there. Yeah, the, the toss lacks a little something to be desired. But, uh, an infielder could only hope to be that fast. Now Jimmy Paredes the batter. At 189 he has one homer. He's driven in seven runs. I wonder if he's trying to show Joe Madden he can play multiple positions. He might be. He's pretty nimble and very quick footed. Jimmy showing butt. Take strike one. This is his third start since he was recalled on Sunday from Triple A Oklahoma City. Justin Maxwell on the seven day concussion disabled list will be headed out on a rehab assignment probably over the weekend. Good news I ran into Justin last night after the game and said he's feeling good. Everything is uh, in order right now. And so I think we can look forward to seeing him very quickly. He's shooting for Tuesday night in St. Louis. J. Max will need uh, one game. That's the feeling. But he has more strenuous testing to undergo first. Bo Porter said because he had. A little relapse on that concussion. They thought he was about ready to return, and, and he played in that one game, and then uh, went diving back into first and had some headache problems, a little dizziness. That uh, he will have to undergo more strict testing now before he's allowed to play in another game. Two balls, two strikes. The doctors have a very rigid uh, regimen involving players who are in that type of situation, dealing with slight concussions and. If he can get over that hurdle, he'll be back on the field in a few days. Foul, and it's still two and two to Jimmy Paredes. And it's July 4th. The Astros uh, have been on the road the last few fourths of July. They were in Pittsburgh the last couple of years. Their last win on this day, July 4th, was in 2006. It was in Houston. They beat the Cubs 7 to 2. They're 27 and 28 all time on this date. It's three and two. Let's see. Uh, George Steinbrenner was born on July 4th. Late Yankee owner. He represented fireworks. He certainly did. Archer gets a strikeout. That's number four for him, and he has retired the first eight. That's got a good changeup to go with that genuine fastball. See the grip. That just screams changeup. Last time he pitched against Detroit, June 29th, he got a no decision. He gave up three hits and three earned runs in five innings. Walk three and fan three against Justin Verlander. There's strike one to Jake Elmore. Elmore, 226, has no homers, one RBI. Elmore. Has had 31 at bats with the Astros. Getting a, a look at shortstop now. That went up and in, almost hit him one and one. Marwin Gonzalez has been playing mostly second base at AAA Oklahoma City. Well, Elmore shares shortstop with Ronnie Cedeno. This is his fifth start in his last six games. That one bounces to him. It's two balls and a strike. But Julia was saying uh, Jake sang a little bit on camera uh, during pregame interview she did with him today. I'm going to guess country western. Not sure what it was. Might have been some Lee Greenwood. Blues Brothers maybe. 
We've heard God bless the USA today. Maybe that was Jake. Two and two. To Archer. Archer working to Elmore, trying to make it nine straight retired to open this game. And the Astros have seen a little bit too much of that to suit them in recent ball games. Pitchers mowing them down early. Now three and two. Don't want to judge a guy too quickly, but this arm that is possessed by Archer is extremely good. And yet he's been kicking around the minor leagues for a while since 2006. Minor league numbers overall, not blow away type numbers. There's a walk. Elmore works a three and two base on ball. First base runner for Archer, and that's what's been holding him back. The walks. Over his minor league career, 428 walks in just under 770 innings. Rays have not scored many runs for him. They're averaging 2.35 runs per nine innings. They've scored only eight runs total with him in the game over his six starts. Jose Altuve. A little pop fly to shallow right field. Myers made a sliding catch on it. That's good for a strike. There's something you might anticipate a bit with an arm like this. First time hitters see him hitting just 140. Then they pick it up. I'm surprised to the tune that they do pick it up to 362. But the third time, Archer seems to command once again. Mm -hmm. So the middle innings present a hurdle for him. Hard to figure why that might be a guy that we've been watching throw 96 97 with the heater good change up. Worked in the curveball at times. Red Wallace is on deck. Bouncer shortstop slowly hit. There's Escobar with the toss to Zobrist for a force play and it's no runs no hits and a man stranded after three one nothing raid. We go to the fourth one nothing Tampa Bay create memories save money and have fun with Astros baseball whether you're treating your employees hosting clients or bringing out your church or youth sports team will create an experience your group is sure to remember call one eight seven seven nine Astros or visit Astros dot com to enjoy special pricing and great benefits by reserving your group or suite today. Evan Longoria leading off the fourth inning one nothing raise he takes ball one. He has the only RBI in this game. Came on a ground out to third in the first inning. Hits that one, and the center fielder Barnes comes in in shallow right center. Takes charge. Round number one. Jordan Lyles has not allowed a homer now in well over 100 at bats. 
third longest homeless streak against any Astros starting pitcher this year. Of a hang and breaking ball, but Longoria still bothered by that that very sore foot. Just pops it up into shallow center. Lyles trailing one nothing faces James Loney. Loney drew a walk in the first inning. First base was open at that time, and Loney's been so torrid lately. Didn't seem to make much sense to give him a fastball out over the plate. Will Myers is on deck. He shoots that one through the left side, and Loney takes his hitting streak to 15 games, tying his career high. I was just about to say, I wouldn't let him see a fastball out over the plate at all. Not until um, he cools off or, or shows that he can handle the pitch in as well. But boy, he goes out and stings it to left field extremely well. He had a 15 game streak back in 08 to begin the season. So this ties his career high, and he's aboard for Will Myers. Myers grounded out to third in the first inning. Will Myers has played some solid defense. Nice plays. Couple in one inning, that sliding play, and then the diving play in right center field on the rocket hit by Jason Castro. So the youngster can play with the glove. Known for the big bat, though. It's one and one to Will Myers. He was leading Triple A and runs batted in when he got the call to join the Major League Club. At 57 runs batted in for the Durham Bulls, historic minor league franchise. Crash Myers. Yeah. Strike makes it one and two. That's a good slider from Jordan Lyles. <laughs> Guys are talking about that very fact. <laughs> the Rays are 4 and 11 on Independence Day. What does that mean? Pretty much nothing. Ask Will Smith and you'll get an answer. Yeah. Two and two. Go back home to host the White Sox for three, followed by the Twins for four, and then the Astros for three. Up to the All Star break. Special bases for July 4th. It's a great day. This base sponsored by. <laughs> You know what I really like, and that's strike three. Strikeout number two was the uh, veterans who lined up on the foul lines alongside the players for the anthem at the beginning of the day. Players should have felt very honored. Yeah. And I'm sure the, the veterans enjoyed that as well, but it is one of those special days you get to kind of rub shoulders a little bit with those who keep the freedoms that uh, we sometimes take for granted. Astros are hosting uniformed military personnel from all branches of the armed services today. Kelly Johnson looks at ball one. I think a big thank you is always in order. Strike makes it one and one to Johnson. Congress signed the Declaration of Independence July 4th, 1776, declaring this country's freedom. John Adams and Thomas Jefferson were the only signers of the Declaration to serve as presidents. Swing and a miss, one and two. And they both ironically died July 4th, 1826, on the 50th anniversary of the signing of the Declaration of Independence. We do salute those who have defended our freedoms down through the years from the Battle of Saratoga. And through uh, battles in Afghanistan recently. Battle of Belleau Wood in World War I, Guadalcanal, Battle of the Bulge, all those famous battles. Franklin Delano Roosevelt. But our Geico quote, in the truest sense, freedom cannot be bestowed. It must be achieved. Mm.
Ground ball. And that's fielded by Chris Carter at first for out number three. No runs a hit and a man left. One nothing Rays in the fourth. It's amazing. Uh, as a kid growing up, obviously watching games on the 4th of July. Playing in a big league uniform on the 4th of July, summertime, independence for our country. You know, just honoring all the troops who serve our country. Uh, it, it's a blessing, an honor. And there are some of the troops assembled here today. They've watched as the Rays have built a 1 0 lead. We go to the bottom of the fourth inning. And it's a no hit first three innings for Chris Archer. Archer has only one base runner. Jake Elmore, you saw him on the end of those uh, little sound bites, as we say. He drew a walk in the third inning. He's been the only base runner so far. They proudly bring the colors out on this July 4th. Brett Wallace is the first man up here in the home fourth inning. He struck out looking in the first. Mark Appel is scheduled to make his pro debut tomorrow at Class A Tri City in New York. He's reporting to the club this afternoon and being introduced to the local media. That's ball one to Wallace. Appel signed at June 19th. He's been working out at the Astro Spring Training Complex in Kissimmee, Florida. It'll be an exciting time for Mark. That's in uh, a changeup for a strike, and it's one and one. Changeup is a pitch Archer has thrown only 11% of the time. The slider's been terrific, batting average of 125 against his slider this year. That's cracked in the air. Wallace sends it out toward the left field seats. They're getting up, and Brett Wallace has hit one out to tie it 1 1. Number two for Wallace. Into the Landry's Crawford boxes in left. Well, there's no doubt he has opposite field power. I'm stunned that Tampa Bay would leave a fastball out over the plate for Brett to be able to jump on. See, it's very much like the James Loney situation. I think that's a tactical error. And there it went. Tie this game at one. Last night, there were a couple of big. Booms from Chris Carter's bat. He hit two homers. Now Wallace connects. Jason Castro with ball one. So the home run is back in the Astros' attack. Castro blistered a line drive. It was caught by the right fielder, Will Myers, in the first inning. Strike to Castro. That makes it one and one. I change up and. If you're getting fooled on that pitch, you've got a chance of really being fooled if it's kept down. Wallace has been working on some things with his weight distribution, his hands. 
in the last year with hitting coach John Maley working on uh, pivoting on their back foot so a lot of things have come along to change things for him at the plate here in the last year he's strong and excellent when he's able to extend uh, yet to show that he can really do something with that pitch in and you can see the high hands and everything that he's talked about the rhythm when he extends on that pitch away look out fifth home run allowed by Chris Archer in 34 innings. One and two to Castro. It's two balls, two strikes. Well, we saw Roberto Hernandez. He made the start last night. The Tampa Bay Rays had gone 1,207 games without using a starting pitcher signed as a free agent until Hernandez joined their club this year. Pretty much a homegrown organization. Well, they have just such a string of number one picks and a, a bunch of first round activity with compensation and everything. And they took advantage, but they haven't completely let go of that yet. They're still a club that has a chance to contend, but Joe Madden's done a whale of a job with these guys. Jim Hickey, the pitching coach. That's up for ball four. Homer and a walk now for Archer in this inning. That's the second walk for him. Julia. Hey Brownie, we wanted to remind everybody to tune in to Chevy Hometown Kids every Saturday morning at 9.30 on CSN. Chevy Hometown Kids, where it's not about the score, but the experience. Thanks, Julia. Coming up in just two days, you guys will be in Arlington, Texas. Getting ready for a big day on Saturday. Not only a game between the Astros and the Rangers that night between Dallas Keuchel and you Darvish, but also the announcement of the All-Star team. Chris Carter struck out looking in a second. Yeah, a lot of the buzz right now is which Astros player will, if if only one does, get that nod to be on the team. Carter takes a look at it. It's strike one. And from everything I could hear last night, it sounds like there has been a lot of heavy shifting that's taken place, just like we were feeling. But Norris seems to have. Uh, Elevated himself to the lead there. Yeah, the late vote may be changing things as we go down to the deadline. Ooh, up around the head of Carter. One and one. The uh, the Western time zones might be swinging the election a little bit, Ash, as those results come in. We'll see. One and one. State of California going to make a it might. a big hit. Yeah. The Bud, of course, getting backing. Of course, Jason Castro is a California guy, too. Strike one and two. Well, Carter being responsible for all four of the Astros' runs last night with a pair of homers. He's joining Select Company. According to the Elias Sports Bureau, only five other Astros have hit two home runs that either tied the game or put the team ahead while accounting for all of the team's runs in a victory. Jeff Bagwell, Craig Biggio, Lance Berkman, Hunter Pence, Justin Maxwell. Foul back. Last night was the second multi home run game of Chris Carter's career. He connected twice in Seattle this year on April 9th. It was the fifth time this year, and Astros had a multi home run game. Now we can go back to spring training. All the talk about Chris Carter and the 16 home runs he hit as a member of the A's last year in 67 games. So now he's playing his 82nd game of this season. Not quite at the pace he had last year, but Right in that range. Mm -hmm. You know that pace is interesting. People say, "Well, he's on a pace to do this." He was on a pace to do that last year. Tap foul. But if a guy plays half a season, and we'll say he, he's with the team all year, but he gets uh, 300 at bats, we'll say. So he's getting days off probably almost every week. Now you swing toward becoming an everyday player. There's going to be fatigue that those guys are going to have to deal with who are making that jump to everyday player that they didn't necessarily have in the past, right? Not many guys will put up numbers that are 
virtually identical first half to second half. And I, I, I think that's generally true. Now, some guys will actually have better second halves, obviously, than the first half. But just because a guy hits 15 bombs in half of his games doesn't mean you're looking at a guy that's going to hit 30. But I think in Chris Carter's case, if you look at what he did last year and what he's done this year, you're probably going to be pretty close to that ballpark figure. Okay. There's one from Escobar, and then the turn by Zobris makes it a 6 4 3 double play. Escobar's played 41 games in a row without making an error. That time, had plenty of time, so he dropped down to a knee to start the double play. Very talented player at shortstop. Has not been the most consistent player through the years, but as he drops to a knee, they're realizing the lack of speed from Chris Carter. That's uh, that's good, intelligent baseball. 68 double play for the Rays this year. Now two outs and Carlos Pena bats. Carlos struck out looking in the second inning. Astros scored just four runs in the first three games of this series. Carlos lines one the second baseman Zobrist is right there though in shallow right field for out number three and the Brett Wallace opposite field home run off Chris Archer tied this game in the fourth it's one one. Amen. We're moving to the fifth inning, and we have a little something for you. In fact, it's this moment in history brought to you by the MD Anderson Cancer Center. July 4th, 1995, Craig Biggio hit two homers and set a club record with five runs scored in a 16 to 8 beatdown of the Colorado Rockies. And to rub it in, he also stole a base and drove in three. Ho oh, hum. In that beatdown, Ash. Well, you got to have a beatdown every now and then. Yeah. Craig Biggio had a bunch of. Personal beatdowns through his career. Future Hall of Famer, no doubt about it. Pretty impressive uh, what he did and what an opportunity to have watched that great career. Yes. It's 1 1 here as Jose Lobaton leads it off in the fifth. He grounded out earlier. There is ball one for Jordan Lyles with Escobar and Jennings to follow here in the fifth inning for the Rays. Miles misses there and falls behind 2 and 0. Another Astro of yesteryear, Tony Eusebio back in 1994 had four hits, including a double and a triple. That's out into right field, Jimmy Paredes. That one fooled him a bit. One out. Well, I, I think he's showing classic signs of a guy that was battling the lights. And it's impressively done. If that's what it was, he'll throw the glove up just after last thing we saw in there. You can see him kind of going after the eyes, but I think the lights got him. You now Escobar comes up. 0 for 1. He hit a fly ball to center in the second inning. Tony Eusebio 
So he was a patriotic guy as well. Yeah. How about the triple that he picked up on that day? The four hits. I can throw those out the window. Tony can hit, but a triple. Tony hit a triple. Very impressive. He didn't tumble into a dugout on that day. I hope. I remember that one. One and one. What happened? Did a couple of outfielders collide, or three of them? <laughs> That's no way to be. <laughs> one ball, two strikes. M.P. Coconos is a catcher who was born and raised in Houston. He attended U of H, transferred to St. Mary's University in San Antonio. He was named Class A Lancaster's Player of the Month yesterday. There's a shot past the diving Wallace into left field. Escobar's on with a single. Hit number four for the Rays. Julia. Hey guys, tune in to Fox July 16th for this year's All-Star Game at City Field in New York. The best players from the American and National Leagues compete for the home field for home field advantage in the World Series. You guys were just talking about this. Yeah, uh, so what's your feel about the Astros All-Stars? Do you have a, a gut feeling about who's going to be on that American League All-Star team? I think there's a few guys around here that absolutely need to be there. And they've been voting for each other. We've talked sure. about it in the past couple of days. Yeah. Trying to get their families to vote too, and fans really got to step it up. Desmond Jennings, the batter. That brings us to a question, though. We'll strike one on Jennings. They're voting online as the fans are for each other, right? I believe so. But when they vote on the players' ballot, are they allowed to vote for their teammates? Ooh. That's a great question. Yeah. We'll have to ask. There's a shot into left field again. Hit that same hole, and Jennings has his second hit of the day. It's first and second, one out with Matt Joyce coming up. I don't think they are, Ash. I could be wrong on that. Yeah, I don't know the answer there either. Yeah, there's, there's some digging we need done around here. Okay. Somebody with a did you bring your trowel with a digging sleeve on ought to be able to get that done. All right. Let's get one of those sleeves and a trowel. <laughs> <laughs> Matt Joyce. Wait a minute. This is July 4th. This is a day to relax. Yeah. Jo right after you get the barbecue all taken care of. <laughs> Joyce is one for two. And that's ball. MP Coconos. Is leading the California League in batting average at 350. Houston native. And he's driven in 50 runs in 56 games. He's the catcher at Lancaster. That's a shot into the seat. So we, we can add him to the list of catching depth in the Astros organization, eh? Maybe a future Tony Eusebio somewhere here. Yeah, it's nice when you've got a guy that's swinging the bat. That well from that position. Of course, uh, you know the Lancaster numbers are usually very good offensive numbers. Here's a future catcher. Well, they come as a trio. Kingston trio. Really proud of each other. I don't know if they can belt it out like that. One and two. Is tonight the deadline on the voting for the All-Star teams? Oh, not sure. Need to do some more research on that. We're going to be researching for the rest of the afternoon. I thought this was supposed to be a day of relaxation. <laughs> Came out. That's right out number three for Jordan Lyles. The curveball coming alive again here this afternoon. A little bit of a rough first inning, but he's turned it around beautifully. Now with two outs, it's Ben Zobras. Zobras is 0 for 2. Astros named their minor league players and pitchers of the month for June yesterday. Jason Stoffel at Oklahoma City was a pitcher of the month. Jonathan VR, the player of the month. Bouncer back to Lyles. Tossing to Carter. No runs, two hits, two man left. 1-1 one, one in the fifth.
bottom of the fifth, and it's all tied up at one. And we also want you to check out MLB. Dot, well, I don't want to give it to the wrong. We want you to check out MLB at bat. There we go. You have to text at bat to 31826 or visit astros.com for details as to get highlights, live scores, pitch tracking, anything you can imagine. Just go to MLB at bat, guys. Thank you, Julia. Uh, we saw Greg Lucas there. As you can see, Greg, our longtime compatriot, and his wife, Young, are at the game today. Didn't know they were here, did you, Ash? No, I think they're just taking in a little baseball before the voting ends tonight because I'm sure the votes are going to be coming fast and furious from Greg. Yeah. Uh, 11.59 Eastern tonight, the end of the voting for the All-Star game. So that's 10.59 Central? Uh, that would be... Uh, yeah. Yeah, that would be right. Okay. <laughs> big, big math like that. You start getting in, into those... Uh, Algebraic equations and I, I'm I'm messed up. What would that be mountain then? <laughs> There's ball one to Mark Krause. <laughs> he fouled out to the third baseman in the second inning. And Krause takes a look at ball two, two balls in it. So you're telling us we need to start voting now on this July 4th, this day of rest. <laughs> it's amazing how you can jump from algebra to trig just like you did there. Really something, isn't it though? Sometimes you have to shift gears. <laughs> Two and one. But rest while you're doing it oh, today. Yeah. And eat plenty of barbecue. Build up your strength for the rest of the week. I wonder if there's going to be barbecue on the plane served this afternoon. I would guess you're going to get a lot of that. Strike. Here's a question for you. Yeah. This is Thursday, July 4th. Is anybody working on Friday, July 5th? There are people working. Phil says he's working. If they're asked to make sure and arbitrate. Orbit has gotten himself in danger up on that rail before. Fly ball, center field, Jennings back. That's out of one. I thought Orbit had been cautioned against getting back up there, Ash. Well, maybe not by Julia yet, and, and only when cautioned by Julia does one really listen. Oh, he's, he's got to shake that little kid's hand. That's why he's doing it. I think that railing is in severe jeopardy. Orbit's been taking dance classes. <laughs> Brandon Barnes is next. And that's Paul. Proving to my wife why there's no need to take dance classes. <laughs> she just will not listen. Red Sox five, Padres two, top of the sixth inning. How many of us men have their their wonderful wives constantly encouraging? I'll say I'll use a good word like that. That we take dance classes together. Well, at one point or another, probably about ninety-eight point four percent, at least, if not higher. That's just because they need a laugh. Two balls and a strike. Into not wasting money. <laughs> Just think of all the flexibility that could be gained from that. Though, right? I've considered that, and I will stay on the side I'm on. That's a bouncer in the right field, and a nice piece of work by Brandon Barnes. It's only hit number two for the Astros. He's aboard for Jimmy Paredes. What do you do? Do you try to work up a running game in a Game like this where yes. the pitching has dominated. Yes, he's going to go. The Astros Pats have found the pitching staff from Tampa Bay to be really tough. He is going to be running here. So are you going to back him up with a hit and run? Or are you going to have him on his own? He's on his own. He can pick his pitch. Beretta struck out in the third inning. Archer throws over. There have been five steals in five attempts with Archer on the mound. Tampa Bay has yielded a load of stolen bases this year. 84. Second highest total in the majors. Seven steals, five caught stealings for Brandon Barnes. And when he decides he's going, it quite often can be the first pitch. And 
not going and it's a ball. So he's going on this next pitch. And that's a, a scientific uh, response you have there. No. Just a guess. <laughs> Just a pure guess. Well done from the resting position. <laughs> Not going. It's a ball. Here's a question for you as a catcher with a left handed batter in the box and a possible base stealer on. Does that aid the base stealer? The fact that you as a catcher have that left handed batter, you can't see as well about what's going on at first base? It can, but. Usually you hear the hauler from first base before you really need to. It's not like you should be delayed because you didn't see him. Now three and oh. First baseman should holler out immediately on step number one from the runner. Obviously as a catcher you shouldn't be just kind of sitting back there waiting to, to see or hear something. You, you should be well prepared. Didn't help me in the tail end of my career. I can assure you that. Draws the throw and went flopping back into first base. And the Rays allowed, as we mentioned, uh, 84 steals. They've caught 16. Let's make that 64. 64 steals. Strike makes it three and one. You almost found a way to make Joe Madden grayer. <laughs> He's just one of those guys, isn't he? he? He looks like he would roll with the punches. Oh, does he ever? No matter what would happen in a baseball game. He has arrived at the ballpark with his hair dyed black and just all <laughs> sorts of things. Runner going. And there's the throw, and it's on target. And they. Oh, it's ball four. I wonder there's no call. James Hoy did not make a call. That's because the pitch was ball four. Well, I think for the Astros, feel very fortunate that that was ball four because I think we were awaiting the thumb coming up down at second base. Looked like it. Now Jim Hickey's out to talk. Boy, that's a pretty good looking pitch, too. Bottom of the knees area with that fastball. Could have very well had a double play on our hands. Brandon did not walk off second as others have done, only to be tagged out, not knowing it was ball four. So now 76 pitches, 46 have been strikes from Archer. And it's Jake Elmore coming up next. Phone call placed to the bullpen. Archer had a one nothing lead until the Brett Wallace homer in the fourth tied it. Now he's walked a couple and allowed a hit since that home run. Four and a third inning still very solid numbers and facing Elmore. Elmore was the first base runner. Eight straight had been retired by Archer until Elmore walked. Barnes takes off. It's a double steal try. No throw on the double steal by the Astros with Paredes following. He went to second with Barnes stealing third. Number eight for Barnes, number three for Paredes. You know, with everything that was discussed on the mound for Tampa Bay, the one thing that was probably omitted was don't forget about the running game now. Double steal, and now it's second and third with one out and a 1 0 count. The middle infielders stay back. Corner infielders pinching in tight. Fly ball goes to right, and that'll score him. And Myers back for the catch. What is Jimmy Paredes doing at second base? He didn't tag. It's two to one as the sacrifice fly scores Barnes, but Paredes did not tag and move from second. Oh. This is an automatic catch in the major leagues. With plenty of depth to move from second to third, and that is just very poor base run. Nice job by Jake Elmore getting the run home. He's starting to go back to second. Wow. And it looked like he thought maybe the ball would be over Meyer's head. 
Sacrifice fly. Elmore gets his second RBI. Alex Torres warming up in the bullpen. Altuve the batter. Ball one to Jose. He's 0 for 2. Boy, oh boy, there are managers I know I have played for that would have been livid at this point. That's uh, that's a mistake that can cost you a ball game. Well, in that situation, this one gets away, and he started to think about going to third, but didn't. Ball was recovered quickly by Lobaton. One and one to count. In that situation, if the base runner at second goes back to the bag, and the ball does prove to be over the right fielder's head, he can still score on that. Yeah, you would think so. But the thing is, you're sizing up something that you've seen a thousand times that fly ball to right field. You know that ball's likely 99.9. .9. That's an ivory soap catch in the major leagues. And you tag up and move 90 feet. Is that a wet ivory soap? Because that could be slippery. That's the last time you've seen that commercial. 99.44, uh, 100% pure. It's been at least 35 years. Yeah, I think it has been. None of these players would have any clue, but no. Fly ball out to center field. Jennings retreats with the catch. And the Astros break the tie. They get a run on one hit. They leave a man, and through five, they're up two to one. To you by your local Toyota dealer. Toyota, let's go places. Who was Tampa Bay's starting pitcher in game one of the 2008 World Series? Well, uh, that was the uh, that was the first year that David Price was in the big leagues. Was it David Price? I'm wondering. Was it James Shields? Was it Matt Garza? Hmm. We'll be finding out. Evan Longari is the batter. There's ball one. Longori up at an RBI on a bounce out in the first inning. He's 0 for 2. It's a good question. Longoria hits that one toward the seats. Foul territory. And it's a one ball, one strike count. Houston connection on that one, and uh, I think we may be talking left handed. Ooh. Scott Kazmir type guy? You got it. That's my guess. Throw from shortstop, Elmore. Gets Longoria. That's out number one. Well, that makes sense. Scott Kazmir from Sci Falls High School in Houston. Drafted by the Mets, traded to Tampa Bay. 
And some good years for the race. James Loney has a walk and a single today. See if they crowd him this time up because he hit that fastball away for his single to left field. Wallace is about halfway between second and third. That's ball one. Yasiel Puig left with an injury last night for the Dodgers uh, in right field, trying to make a catch. And it looked like a hip injury. Two balls and no strikes. There are more and more columns being written by writers advocating that Puig be an all star this season. Jonathan Papelbon says no. Two and one. I agree with Jonathan, but the guy has been sensational. You think it's good for the game if he does make it? Yes. It is good for the game. Fly ball, deep left center field. Barnes on the run. This one hit way back, but it's caught by Krause. Two outs. Let's see if it was Scott Kasner who started game one of the 08 World Series. That was our trivia question for the Rays. It was Scott Kasner. Now with Cleveland. A big time arm at that time. He's been trying to make that comeback again this year and at times looking like it it might succeed other times where it's come up a bit shy. Yeah. Will Myers has grounded out and struck out. Diamondbacks and Mets are tied 2 2 They're in the middle of the eighth inning at City Field. Which will be the site of the all star game this year. That's strike one. What do you think about Puig? Should he be in the All-Star game? The more I think about it, the more it becomes intriguing to me. I, I, I tend to agree. The knee jerk is to say, oh, come on, he hasn't been in the big leagues long enough to really consider. But has he been one of the best players that could help that squad win? Elmore with a catch at shortstop on the liner by Myers. Middle of the sixth inning. Astros two, Rays one. Well, those are some of the many military folks who assembled and gathered here at Minute Maid Park today, taking part in special ceremonies on this July 4th, displaying the American flag. Uh, colors were presented. And uh, there they lined up along the foul lines with the players. Highly decorated veterans of our country taking part in ceremonies today. First pitch was thrown out by Major Mike Bean, Battalion Executive Officer. With 24 years of service in the Army, including a combat tour in support of Operation Enduring Freedom in Afghanistan. Combat pilot, 
And the AH 64D Apache helicopter. With the 158th Attack Reconnaissance Battalion in Conroe, Texas. They strike one to Brett Wallace. He homered in the fourth inning. He's one for two. In the air, and the third baseman comes over. Kelly Johnson. One out. So we're honored to have them here with us today. And the presentation of our colors by the E.L. Fur High School Junior ROTC. And then the national anthem performed by 36th Infantry Division Bands Soldiers Chorus. Heavy hitters all. One out and it's Jason Castro. He blistered a line drive caught by the right fielder Myers and he walked. Taking a look at that one for ball one. It's great that sometimes major league players make overseas tours to visit soldiers as well. One ball one strike. Astros players routinely meet with groups of veterans who come in for ball games. Foul back. We have so many uh, military personnel in the state of Texas who like to take in a major league game with the Astros at Minute Maid Park from time to time. Always welcome. Archer's thrown 85 pitches, 53 have been strikes. Talked about the minor league numbers, Brownie, on Archer and the walks that he's had and how it's held him back from getting to the big leagues. But what we've seen today has been quite good. It has been good, you're right. It's two and two. He'll miss badly, just like that pitch where it runs up and in on the right hand hitter, runs away from the left hand hitter. But much of the time he's been right there in the strike zone. Foul by Castro still a two ball two strike count to Jason. Well he's five Pirates two there in the top of the eighth at PNC Park in Pittsburgh where Pirates fans have really been treated to some top notch baseball by their Buckos this year. Shoots it foul, still two balls, two strikes. I think the Buckos have gotten better with Garrett Cole coming on to be a part of that pitching staff now. Really a better club than the one that broke from spring training. He started today. He went five and a third innings, allowing eight hits, three runs. And Cole Hamels has outpitched him. Hamels has been in and is still in the game for seven innings. Phillies leading it five to two, bottom of the eighth now. Wonder about that Phillies club. Will they try to break up the team? Will they trade Chase Utley? Perhaps one of the pitchers. It's been a cold day in Pittsburgh, huh? <laughs> yeah. Foul back. Two and two. Well, Garrett Cole was the first pick by the Pirates just over a year ago, and here he is in their rotation right now. It's happened quickly for the UCLA right-hander. Castro fouls it back, keeping the count at two balls, two strikes. Quad Cities won a one nothing game last night over Clinton. Vincent Velasquez authored six innings of one hit shutout ball. He did not get the decision though. Carlos Correa was two for three. He's hitting 327 now. Velasquez is one of the hard throwing youngsters in the Astros system. One of those pitchers to be watched. Foul back. Four 
15th ranked prospect coming into this season. Six and three with a 3.56 ERA. Last four appearances, two and zero, with an ERA of one. Look at the 24 strikeouts in those 18 innings. Just three walks. It's impressive. Tenth pitch is coming for Archer to Castro, and it's a ball that makes it three and two. And the Astros have worked some counts on this young right-hander today. He retired the first eight. Then he walked Elmore on a 3 2 pitch. Wallace took him deep in the fourth to tie the game. Walked Castro on a 3 2 in the fourth. Now another 3 2 coming to Castro here in the sixth. And he fouls that one. I'd hate to be a right hand hitter on Archer from what I've seen here today. He leaves a lot of fastballs right in that head region of the right hand hitter. True. Got that up and in kind of riding action. Bee Gees have arrived at the ballpark. Great singing group. <laughs> okay. Castro strikes out. What do you think your favorite uh, group has been down through history? That's strikeout number five. Down through history yeah. might overstate my lifespan, but um, probably, and I. No, you're not supposed to acknowledge things like that. Probably Van Halen, and, and I know that's your favorite group too. So, well, not really, but <laughs> but out of deference to you and your musical taste, he's in the conversation, or they're in the conversation. I always get confused about individuals and groups. There's Paul one. Carter is over two. Well, you do dance. Uh, yeah, but I can't identify people in groups. <laughs> now, Julia was supposed to be, uh, she got some singing from Jake Elmore on videotape sometime during the pregame period, but we have not seen anything of that. Have I we? need to see that. He was singing. I think it might have been Oak Ridge boys type singing. Bouncer to third. And the throw from Kelly Johnson in time to get Carter after six. The Astros lead the Rays two to one. The Rays as we get set for inning number seven the Astros head north on I-45 to Arlington Texas to take on state and division rivals the Astros and the Texas Rangers coverage begins at 6 30 p.m. tomorrow night on Comcast Sportsnet with Alan Ashby Jeff Blum and Julia Morales. Well it would seem that this is a good time to take a look at tomorrow's pitching matchup brought to you by Chevron care for your car Lucas Harrell takes to the hill as the Astros take to the road trip five and eight four fifty nine the ERA. And lifetime one and two, the 371 line against the Rangers. On the other side, Nick Tepish 
Right-hander goes to the hill. Three and six, 471 is that ERA. And, uh, six innings of work against Houston. Jordan Lyles leading 2-1. Delivers ball one. Kelly Johnson takes it. Johnson is 0 for 2. Lucas Harrell getting set to go to work. In just a little bit more than 24 hours up north. Thinking, what am I going to eat on the plane tonight? Yeah. One and one. Let's see, what was the uh, spread this morning? It was shrimp and grits that the guys were eating. <laughs> for real? Yeah, they really were. Well, that's one of those combos we all dream of. Travis Blackley is the lefty, and the right hander is Josh Fields in the Astros bullpen. His inning number seven arrives for Jordan Lyles. He's thrown 83 pitches. Probably what you had this morning. Shrimp right? and grits. Uh -huh. Three and one. They were quite thrilled with it in that clubhouse. I'm hoping that's kind of like a, a fried up, grilled up sort of a, a shrimp and not a shrimp cocktail with no. grits. No, it I, smelled really good. It just really wouldn't work for me. In the air, and Elmore pursues it out into shallow left field. Kraus is behind him, though, calling him off. That's out number one. It smelled kind of like shrimp scampi. That's nice. Yeah. But Jordan Lyles just continues to make this work here this afternoon after that first inning. He had a chance to maybe allow Tampa Bay a big first inning. Held it to one run after a couple of early hits. And that's been key to this point. Jordan's had seven ground ball outs. Jose Lobaton, the batter, is 0 for 2. Jordan has been among the ground ball fly ball ratio leaders in the American League. So not so much today. There's strike one. He's averaging 2.14 ground ball per fly ball. And that's fourth in the American League. It's a one ball, one strike count. Well, if you can stay efficient here. In this seventh inning with the pitch count, he's got a chance of working a good solid eight on this afternoon. That's off the plate, and it's two and one. Jordan has not allowed a walk to a leadoff batter in an inning in his last six starts, only three all year. Now three and one. In his last start, he threw 86 pitches, and there were two swings and misses in the game. That's in for a strike. That makes it three and two. And in four innings, he allowed five hits and four runs in that last start. Previous start in Chicago, he allowed. Five earned runs in five innings. So his ERA is nine for the last two starts. Prior to that, he had strung together some outstanding work. Lobaton walks. That is number two. And Escobar will follow. Faith and Family Night is back Saturday, July 20th. <coughs> Excuse me, the Astros take on the Mariners at 6 10 p.m. with an inspirational postgame concert featuring 10th Avenue North. Your game ticket is also your ticket to the concert. Call 1 877 9 Astros or visit Astros.com to get your tickets today. It's always a big night here. Sometimes there are more than one of those in a season. Yunel Escobar singled to left in the fifth. He's one for two. Bouncer left side. Elmar gets in front of it. Throws to second. Out to the up and over. Safe at first. Did not look like a double play ball, but the Astros got out number two from six to four. With a nice quick turn from Altuve, that wound up being much closer at first than I would have guessed. It really did. Didn't look like they had a chance. Not an easy play. Is a little bit of a tweener hop forced Elmore back. But he got the play done well to get that sure out at second. Lobaton sliding. Not that slide in the Detroit game last Ooh. night. Yeah, that was uh, Kobe Rasmus, I believe you're referring to. Yes, it was. You're right. Late and deep into the bag at second. 
Jennings with a shot into left center field. Barnes over to try to head it off, and he does, but it's going to be first to third unless they get out, they out at second. They do not. Good hustle by Jennings. He stretches that to a double with Escobar going to third with two outs. Jennings is three for four in this game with a pair of doubles. Nice job by Brandon Barnes. Good strong throw into second base. Trying to give himself as much chance as was possible, but Jennings just simply too fast on this play. Now Doug Brocale's going out. And that means that Lyles will likely be given the chance to stay on, and I completely concur. I, I, I'm not a fan of having the bullpen come in. In a very meaningful situation, not only for the team, but for the starting pitcher individually. Ninety three pitches for Lyles, fifty six have been strikes. Home plate umpire Jim Reynolds arrives at the scene. He'll try to hasten along this meeting. And first base open. Joyce is the batter. Joyce is one for three. Zobrist on deck. Joyce single to right field in the first inning. Yeah, the Tigers really took issue with that slide at second base. And Omar Infante was hurt. Not sure how badly. Yeah, I think Rasmus could be a marked man now for Detroit. That would seem to be the case based on some comments after that game. That's ball one to Joyce. Max Scherzer came right out and said it. That was an unnecessary slide. Great numbers for Lyles, but his lead is two to one. We'll need to get Joyce to get back in that dugout with a two to one lead. One ball, one strike. It could break another way, but bullpen is busy, so we're not sure what would happen if Joyce will say walk. Like he's trying to go right after him, though. It's high for ball two. Two balls and a strike. White Sox two, Orioles nothing. They're in the middle of the seventh inning at U.S. Cellular with Jose Quintana pitching very well, striking out 11 through seven innings against Zach Britton. Backs away. Indians and Royals are tied 5 5 there in the bottom of the sixth inning in Kansas City. Drew Stubbs hit his seventh home run for Cleveland. George Guitarist number three, Lorenzo Kane number four for the Royals. Wow, this one gets way out of reach and the run scores to tie it. And Castro tried to get up out of that crouch. Knock the pitch down, but this wild pitch allows the game to be tied 2 2. Really got away from Jordan Lyles. Well, the command has been flagging seriously here in the inning, but this goes over the ledge. Don't know what happens to have that pitch just suddenly show up. I don't know if that was a breaking ball or a changeup, but just no finish at all from Lyles. Escobar scoring Jennings going to third and it's a 2 2 game. And now that's a walk. And Zobris will come up third walk the second of the inning to go with a wild pitch. And Bo Porter. Now is going to make a move. Zobris will be the batter he's 0 for 3. Bo wants his lefty. Travis Blackley's been warming up. Zobrist is hitting 229 as a right handed batter, 284 left handed, so the move is made. That's it for Jordan Lyles. Had he been able to get Joyce, he could have left him out with a 2 to 1 lead, but now it's a 2 2 ball game. Blackley's coming in. We'll be right back.
Coming out of the Houston bullpen. Jordan Lyles going six and two thirds, allowing six hits, throwing 98 pitches. Walking three, fanning three. And now six hits for the Rays, two hits for the Astros in this tie game. It's going to be Benjamin Zobrist. Switch hitter will turn around to bat right handed. He is 0 for 3. 31st appearance on the year for Travis Blackley. The old left hander trying to come up with a big out to help out Lyles and company. Blackley worked uh, twice against the Angels over the weekend. This is his first appearance in this series. And his first since the game on Saturday. When he gave up three hits and two runs in one inning in a 7 to 2 Houston loss. That's in tight for ball one. Over so for three. And we mentioned this is his weaker side of the plate statistically. 229 right handed for 109 at bats. No homers, 13 runs batted in. 321 slugging percentage for Zobris as a right handed batter. It's also a great weakness for Travis Blackley statistically facing the right hand hitter. Goes to first, a little lean there by the base runner. Joyce got back. A little late reacting. Certainly was considering the way. Blackley's body does a lean of its own heading toward first base early. <laughs> it does. Blackley has inherited 27 base runners. That's tops on the Astros. Only five of the 27 have scored. That one slipped. And it's two balls and no strikes. Evan Longoria is on deck. Blackley's from Melbourne, Australia. Signed with the Seattle Mariners in 2000. He's also been with the Giants, Phillies, Arizona, New York. Went to Korea. San Francisco Giants. Oakland claimed him on waivers. The Astros got him in a trade for outfielder Jake Gobert in mid-April. Joyce has six deals in seven attempts. Marlins and Braves will play tonight in Atlanta. Alvarez versus Tehran. That's a shot and it's going foul at field side. Two balls, one strike. Zobrist ready for that aggressive swing. Yankees lead the Twins at Minnesota. It's 9 to 1 after 6. Justin Morneau hit his fifth for New York. A little down in power so far this year compared to his good season home run figures. David Phelps has the ball for the New York Yankees. Kyle Gibson started for the Twins. Another throw to first. <laughs> Choice just doesn't look like he can read Blackley, and he's not the first to be in that category if he can't. Blackley's move can be akin to reading a Chinese menu at times. Runner creeping off third. And it's a bouncer. Blackley loves it. Tosses to Carter. And that ends the top of the seventh inning. The race tied with one run, one hit. They leave two. And on this special July 4th, we're going to welcome featured soloist of the 36th Infantry Division Band, Specialist Bonnie Rosensteel, to On America with the singing of God Bless America. In the armed forces, we invite you to join us now 
Please rise and join our featured soloist of the 36th Infantry Division Band, Specialist Bonnie Rosensteel, as we honor America with the singing of God Bless America. Alex Torres, the lefty relief pitcher, warming up. Beautiful, colorful hats in the crowd, and Julia Morales has more for us. Hey, Brownie, I am with several members of the U.S. Navy. A lot of these uh, members of the military, they took part in the pregame ceremony. I don't know if people stuck or were here to see any of that, but that was some really cool stuff. I'm with OS1, Jonathan Miller, who's with now. Happy 4th. And what did it mean for you and everyone here to uh, take part in those pregame activities? No, it was special. It was an opportunity to be recognized for our service, and we're very grateful to the Astros. They've been very generous with us, uh, made us feel welcome, and, um, and feel like uh, it's, uh, it's a patriotic day for all of us. We had an opportunity to really show that today. Some of you got to hold the flag. Some of you got to stand along the baselines. Good time for everybody. Oh, yeah. Uh, it, it, it's neat when you get to, you know, be on the field in a major league stadium and everything and most of us are from the houston area so we grew up astros fans so this is a good time good stuff. well thank you for all that you do thank you thanks very much all right brownie thanks julia now bottom of the seventh inning jd martinez the batter pinch hitting for carlos pena pena was 0 for 2 but a lefty reliever now has moved in for archer so it's a right-handed hitter 247 seven homers 30 runs batted in for bull porter against the lefty alex torres And it's a one ball one strike count. J.D. Martinez has hit in seven of his last 11 games. Featuring a pitcher who's 2 and 0 with an ERA of 0 0.39. Only allowed six hits in 23 innings. Archer in six innings allowed just two hits two runs. He walked three and fanned five. Now two and one for Torres. From Valencia, Venezuela, the youngest of eight 
children. And he is ambidextrous. So maybe he'll throw right handed if he wants to. Fly ball right field and shallow. Myers coming in. One out. Greg Harris, the last pitcher to throw uh, with both the right and left hand in a game. Might, I mean. might be, as, as I recall, maybe the only one I was ever uh, aware of being able to do such a thing. Mark Bailey was the only guy I ever played with that had that type of ability. Mark could throw the baseball not equally well from either side, but uh, pretty darn well with the left side. And he was, uh, you said the other day after a spring training game when he uh, hurriedly got ready to go out. He was looking kind of like a Miami Vice type look. Don Johnson or John Donson as John uh, Donson as uh, Beats would say. He he did not require primping. Ronnie Cedeno's pinch inning here for Mark Krause who was 0 for 2. Ronnie's hitting 315 against lefties this year. And that's a breaking pitch dropping in for a strike. It's a one ball one strike count for Alex Torres. Right handers are hitting 065 against Alex Torres. Now two and one for Ronnie Cedeno. Alex Torres had a 25 inning scoreless streak that started September 24, 2011 against Toronto. Steams the fastball by Cedeno for a two ball, two strike count. That was at 91. That was the second longest scoreless. Streak in club history for a Rays reliever. Only JP Howell had a longer streak. That's in tight. And now it's three and two. He looks like a, an uncomfortable sort to be facing. I'm not sure what you're going to get with Alex Torres, it would appear anyway. Box of chocolates pitcher. Yeah. Jose Cisneros warming up for Houston. A little tap goes back to the mound. Torres throwing him out. Two down, and now it's Brandon Barnes. Stay tuned live for post game, or rather, stay tuned any way you want for post game live, presented by MD Anderson, making cancer history. Don't stay tuned, napping though. No. That'll kill the whole program. 20,470 the attendance today on this July 4th. Good crowd having a good time. Julius had a chance to sample some opinions. It's been a nice day. Now Barnes taking strike one. Barnes is one for two. He singled a right and scored on a sack fly by Elmore in the fifth inning after stealing third base in that double steal. Legs have been a factor today. One ball, one strike. And Brandon has been one of the good hitters on the Astros club against left handed pitching to the tune of 333. 22 for 66. That's in for strike two, and it's a ball and two strikes. This bullpen for the Rays has the seventh best ERA among American League bullpens, 3.70. It's two balls and two strikes. The Rays have really turned around their bullpen. They had a major league worst ERA through the first 49 games. Barnes takes a look at it. It's a full count. But since the first 49 games, their relievers have a 2.30 ERA for the last 121 innings. Second best in the majors. Round ball goes foul. Still three and two to Brandon Barnes. Oops. They had a shot at it. Failed to come up with it down the left field line. There's an error up on the board. It's a play that needs to be made on the big league level. Yeah. If you want to go home with the baseball. That's ball four. It's kind of hard to gauge for us. And then come inside with another type of pitch. So I think the right-handed hitter would be somewhat uncomfortable against him, eh? Yeah, he's uh, 
his fastball is right in that 92 93 range. But he does come with that changeup, a very difficult looking changeup for the right hand hitters. And guys like this left handers tend to throw that much more to right hand hitters than to the lefties. And you talked about the numbers, they really stand out. Jimmy Paredes has struck out and walked. He also was a part of that double steal by Barnes. He got his third steal of the year. Torres was in uh, the minors all last year, double A, at triple A Durham, rather. Barnes a little bit bigger lead, a little tapper, and he gloves it. And Torres will toss to first to end the seventh inning with no runs, no hits, and a man stranded. It's tied at two, moving to the eighth. Big and bright Friday night. The Astros take on the Seattle Mariners at 710. Stay after for a spectacular country themed fireworks show. Call 1 877 Astros or visit Astros.com to get your tickets today from. Uh, people love those fireworks shows at July 19th. And you told us already about Faith and Family Night the next night. Now we have changes. Jake Elmore has moved from shortstop to left field. Taking over there as Mark Kraus had started at that position. Ronnie Cedeno stays in. After pinch hitting for Kraus to play shortstop. And Jose Cisnero is pitcher number three for Bo Porter. He's two and one with a 2.27 ERA. Opponents batting average 263 against. Balanced right handers and left handers. Fairly much so. 12 blocks in his 35 and two third innings. He's been good. And, and because he's been good. He's earned a, a nod to slide toward the back end of the bullpen. Not completely declared as that eighth inning guy yet. Well, this is his fourth straight appearance in the eighth inning. So whether declared or not, seems to be that guy. Evan Longoria is the batter. There's ball one. But it's understandable sometimes the manager does not want to pinpoint exactly how he's going to use a pitcher. And he has kept his options open with Jose Cisnero, just saying, hey, he's he's earned this promotion, this right to pitch late in meaningful games. That's up to Longoria. It's 2 0. Longoria 0 for 3 with an RBI. And that might mean the eighth inning. It might mean the ninth. Who knows? Maybe Jose Veras needs a day off. And there's a closing opportunity. Joel Peralta is warming up for the Rays. Meanwhile, it's 3 0 on Longoria. And Cisnero, who pitched an inning last night, gave up one hit, no runs. He gave up a leadoff hit to Joyce, then got Zobris to ground into a double play and struck out Longoria, but now it's fallen behind Longoria, 3 0. Should Longoria reach, I would anticipate seeing either Sam Fold or John Rodriguez being called on as a pinch runner, so the Rays would immediately have reasonable speed on base. Well, Longoria has reached. He's going to trot up the first baseline, then we'll see how things unfold. Looks like Sam Fold will be the unfolding. Yeah, he'll be the yeah, how things unfold, maybe we should say. As Fold is the pinch runner for Longoria. 
So Fulk takes over now, and it's James Loney batting. Loney is one for two with a walk. Fold in the stolen base department has three and four tries. Loney has a walk, a single to left, and a fly ball to left. Cisnero in his 13 outings since May 11th is 2 and 1 with a 0.73 ERA, allowing two earned runs in 24 and two thirds innings. Strike one to Loney. So during that time, since May 11th, Cisnero is sixth among all major league relievers in ERA with at least 20 innings pitched. Came up from Oklahoma City, April 22nd. It's one and one. Cisnero has certainly not come in here immediately looking sharp and pinpoint with his pitches. No, he has not. Runner going. Fly ball out to left center field coming in. And Elmore on the run. He grabs it. He throws back toward first base. No double play. What a good idea to try to throw because Fold had to get back quickly. And it's out number one. And Elmore had to play in front of him. But he was throwing on the run and he throws a little bit off. Pretty good jump at first base. Joe Madden trying to make something happen. Maybe an extra step or two there. Certainly an extra step from Jake before unleashing that throw. And you might have noticed on that replay, Ronnie Cedeno is decoying as if there had been a ground ball. Pretty standard ploy, and base runners still get caught. Will Myers is 0 for 3. Nice strike one. Did you see on the highlights of last night's game the, uh, the infield fly rule? And uh, it was in the Giants Reds game. Brandon Phillips after the infield fly had been called let the ball drop. And uh, the runners were confused. They don't have to run. The batter is automatically out. But they wound up getting a double play on Buster Posey. He was tagged out trying to go from first to second. Does that not surprise you that guys who are playing in the major leagues have played all along all the steps <laughs> don't exactly know that rule but runners can advance. At their own peril. Yeah. And that's exactly what they did. He created some peril by trying to advance. There's a line shot left field corner. And now Fold is headed for third base. Here's Elmore throwing it in toward third and into second base goes Myers. So two men in scoring position now. If the throw had come to second, well they might have been able to get Myers or at least. Keep the double play in order, but the ball was hit hard toward the corner, so probably a double either way for Myers. Myers hasn't had what you'd call a, an eye popping series, but he's done enough things and stinging a ball like this. You can see why a lot of people think he's going to be a heck of a major league player. Probably that, that throw would have been best served coming into second base, but I, I think, like you say, Brownie. When it's all said and done, likely a double either way for Myers. Now the infield comes in for Kelly Johnson. Johnson's 0 for 3. Lobatone is on deck. That is ball one. Kelly Johnson is a guy that'll strike out a lot, and that might be a reason to. Go right after him right here. See if you can get that second out via the strikeout. It's also a guy with a lot of power can hit that sack fly. Johnson has struck out 65 times this year so far. Now Cedeno's coming in. And he wanted to say something to Cisnero. Don't know how much. Bo Porter might be chewing on the notion of the intentional walk to Kelly Johnson loading up load him up for the not so fast footed Jose Lobaton the catcher. Lobaton in the number eight spot then Escobar bats ninth. And 
Yeah, it looks as if that may have been the instruction. Don't throw him a strike. Uh, it's two and zero. Oh. And they meet again. This apparently is a three-plus meeting at the mound hitter at the plate. Must be. By the way, uh, just checking some numbers from Triple A Oklahoma City. George Springer, since he was promoted from Double A. Corpus Christi has had 26 at bats. He's hit 346. Two homers, six runs batted in. He has a uh, 1,084 OPS for the Red Hawks. Yeah, he just continues to tear it up. And I think probably the biggest thing that I've seen with, with Springer this year was not only the way he went and played at double A, but in that opportunity in the All Star game, the way he just took over and, and looked like a guy who was just playing with. Players that he's better than. Mm -hmm. Jonathan Singleton sitting 242 in 66 at bats for the Red Hawks. He has one homer, six runs batted in, and OPS of 679. Now it's 3 0. Oh. And ball four may be intentional here. We'll just go ahead and put him on. Nothing close enough for Johnson to swing at. Although the first pitch to him looked pretty good, it yep. was at the bottom of the knees. I don't think there was an intention at that point to put him on. Right. Intentional walk. Bases loaded. One out. Julia Morales is up. This Saturday, the Dynamo look to right the ship at home as they host the Philadelphia Union. Coverage begins at 7:30 p.m. with Dynamo pregame live, followed by kickoff at 8. Back to you. Thanks, Julia. Jose Lobaton is 0 for 2 with a walk. Lobaton has had back to back three hit games today, reaching with that seventh inning walk. He's grounded into one double play this year. They strike one on a foul tip. Escobar's on deck. Sam Full, the pinch runner for Longoria, is at third with Myers at second and Johnson at first. It's one and one for Jose Cisnero. It's been one of the pleasant surprises for the Astros this season, starting out at AAA and a player who has been in the organization since 07. But really had uh, pedestrian numbers last year. 340 ERA at Corpus, 454 at Oklahoma City. And it's turned out to be looking much better than he did on paper last year. Roll to second, Altuve gets the out at second, and that's it as the go ahead run scores to make it 3 2. The ball too slowly hit for a play at the plate on fold, and he scores run number three for the Rays. I wondered though. As Cedeno took this throw at the bag at second, with a quick return to first base, how close he might have been able to make this play. Watch Lobatone going down the line, and he's still got I don't know, 20, 25 feet to go to get to the bag when the out is recorded at second. Fold scoring the go ahead run. And now three to two with Escobar coming up, runners at first and third and two outs. Myers at third, Lobatone at first. Escobar singled in the fifth inning. He's one for three. Bounced into a force in the seventh and scored run number two. In the air to center field. Barnes racing back. Barnes way back toward Towns Hill. Up on the hill. And that one's up there for extra bases. That's going to score a couple. And in with a two run double. A long double is Escobar. And it's five to two Rays. Escobar unloading. That's his 13th two base hit. Hit it about 400 feet. Great effort. But Towns Hill wins when it's all said and done. And this was one where for Brandon Barnes, it's just back to the plate sprinting time. Eyes looking back at the baseball. And when you do that, that hill just 
doesn't give you much of a chance. That's eight hits now for the Rays. Two doubles in this inning. Four doubles in the game for them. Desmond Jennings has two of those doubles and three of the eight hits. The intentional walk to Kelly Johnson gave the Astros a chance to get out of the inning with the bases loaded, but Lovatone's grounder did not get them a double play, and then Escobar followed with the two run double. Breaking pitch, strike one. Escobar, the number nine hitter. Driving in two to give him 35 runs batted in. And there's the landing point. Replace your divots. Jose Lobaton hit the ground ball here with one out. And was there any shot, even the remotest opportunity for a double play right there? Now you could see the runner coming down the first base line. I'd like to take a peek at that one more time and maybe freeze it at the last instant where you can see the runner Lobatone going down the first base line. But look to me like there might have been a shot. Foul ball makes it one and two. If you get the double play, no run score. And again, you really have to kind of take the look in both directions. But watch the runner come coming down that first base line. Right now, do you have a chance at a double play at first? I think you do. And Ronnie Cedeno quit on that notion early, accepting the lead out and, and a run scoring. Swing and a miss and a strikeout of Jennings. In the eighth inning, the Rays grab the lead. They score three times with two hits. They leave a man, and it's five to two. Top of the eighth inning now. They lead it five to two going to the bottom of the eighth inning. And we look back on some of the key plays of this game, including a home run by Brett Wallace in the fourth inning. That tied it 1 1. That excellent opposite field power. And then there's this play. And that provides a run. That's the second out of the inning. But then the big two run double by Escobar. And Three run lead now for Tampa Bay. But I think that ground ball hit by Lobatone could be, at least in my eyes, uh, the key play of the ball game. And now as Elmore comes up to lead off the home eighth inning, he has a walk and a sacrifice fly. Well, Julia told us he did some singing before the game. Let's see if we can listen in on that. 
Born in the USA, Springsteen, that's actually a really good one. And it goes a little bit like, it's born in the USA, I was born in the USA. That's just a, a, a little sampling. Well, very nice. I think he's got a chance. Should he head for the voice? I think the voice should head for him. We need you on our wall. Showing butt. There's Paul. One. Joel Peralta in the game now. Torres worked one inning, allowing no hits, no runs. He had a walk and no strikeouts. Torres can be the winning pitcher. Peralta trying to get a hold here. Peralta has four straight scoreless appearances. He's falling behind Elmore. Two balls, no strikes. Peralta worked one hitless inning Tuesday night in the Tampa Bay eight to nothing win. He had a strikeout in that game for the season. He's one and four with a 2.89 ERA. Leads the American League in appearances. This is number 44 for Peralta. Again, a bunch shown by Elmore, and the pitch nowhere close. It's three balls, no strikes. Altuve and Wallace to follow. Batting average against Peralta is just a measly 174. Walked 16 though in 37 and a third innings. 3 1 now to Elmore. The Astros bat in the eighth inning, trailing 5 2. Peralta has bounced around. He's been with the Angels, Kansas City, Colorado, Washington, joining Tampa Bay in the 2011 season. And he's become a very reliable setup man. For them at 37 holds last year to lead the American League. But it in the air and back off the screen. Now three balls, two strikes. Three one count finds the third baseman playing deep. So that is an easier opportunity to lay the bunt down in front of Kelly Johnson. But he failed to get it down. That's ball four and it works for Jake Elmore. He's on for the second time. Walk number five for Joe Madden's raise. Joe Madden was over there thinking, what are you doing? We just get a three run lead and you walk the first man? Joe signed a three year extension on February 15, 2012, runs through 2015. At that time, he will be the longest tenured manager or head coach in Tampa Bay sports history, surpassing the Bucks, John McKay. Who coached the Tampa Bay Bucks from 1976 through 84? Student body right. Former Trojan head coach. That's right. Jose Altuve is 0 for 3. Elmore takes off with a big jump and it's a foul ball strike one. He would have been able to steal that base. Three run lead. They want Peralta concentrating on the batter. Yeah, that was a good jump. Peralta deliberate to the plate. Take it while you can. If you get just one run here in the inning, you cut the needs down in the ninth inning. Omar Infante is out of the lineup against the Blue Jays for Detroit today, suffering a shin contusion on that takeout slide from Colby Rasmus yesterday. That's hit to center field and shallow, and it will drop in for a base hit for Altuve in front of Jennings. <laughs> a little 56 degree wedge for Jose, and he's aboard and advances Elmore to second. First and second, nobody out. 
Jose wants you to know that's the 60 degree that oh, he's okay. employing. A little splintered bat on that yeah. too. Yeah. Take them when you can get them. And now the Astros set up shop very nicely. Now Jim Hickey comes out. Peralta will face Fred Wallace next. Assuring him. Jim Hickey's an intriguing guy. Speaks English and Spanish very well. He did a nice job with the Astros as their pitching coach. Let's look back at the fourth inning when Archer faced Wallace. Fred Wallace got a pitch away to his liking. And fans of the Crawford boxes had a little bit of their liking as well. He is one for three. They strike one to Wallace. Wallace could do what Chris Carter did yesterday. Hit two homers and drive in four. He could also tie this game with a long ball. Jason Castro on deck. There are two other lefty relievers for Tampa Bay. Torres has already been used. Wallace looks at it. It's a strike call and makes it 0 2 for Peralta. Great equalizer pitch that change up on the left hand hitter. Kyle Farnsworth is now warming up for the race. Peralta worked 67 innings last year in relief, walking only 17. Wallace takes that one in the dirt. Lobatone blocks it out front. One and two. Well, in about five minutes, Houston Mayor Anise Parker's official July 4th celebration will begin in Eleanor Tinsley Park. Buffalo Bayou, the Freedom Over Texas Lively Outdoor Festival featuring country music artists Cheryl Crow and Tina McBride. Spectacular fireworks show later on tonight. Wallace would like to be a part of a little show. And he smacks one to right field and headed back. Myers, Myers at the wall. Brett Wallace has tied this ball game, and the fireworks start early in Houston. It's 5-5 in the eighth as Wallace hits his second long ball of the day. Move over, Chris Carter. For the second straight game, and Astro has hit two homers and driven in four. It didn't look initially like he got enough. But Red Wallace able to take a pitch that he could turn on and pull this time and drive it out to right field and the Astros are ecstatic. Looked like catcher was setting up away but pitch found its way to that center or even inner third of the plate. And Minute Maid Park is energized by the Wallace long ball. It's 5-5. Five, five. Two home runs for Wallace. Jason Castro the batter. He's 0 for 2 with a walk. What a day for Wallace. And there's strike one to Castro. All starts with that little walk. How many times have you seen that? That was the beginning of it. Worked by Elmore. Then Altuve. A little pop fly hit into shallow center. So it was a walk, a bloop, and a blast. A reluctant curtain call, but one that a lot of fans certainly enjoy. Wallace's third home run as an Astro this year. One ball, one strike. What a different Brett Wallace it's been since the one who was demoted to Oklahoma City. Carter on deck as the Astros try to grab the lead now nobody out. 
That's strike one. Wallace was option to uh, Oklahoma City. He was hitting 042. He had 17 strikeouts and 24 at bats. When he went down, he went down with an 0 for 22 slump. That stretched to 0 for 24. When he got his first hit in his second trial with the Astros, that was in uh, game one of the St. Louis series to start this homestand. And now he's rolled from there. Peralta gets a strikeout. That's out number one. Well, to tell you how badly things were going early on for Brett Wallace, even with all the great work he's done since his return, that batting average is still at 157. That's with his second home run on the deck. That's the sixth two home run game by an Astro this year. Wall is connecting, and now in this 5 5 game, the Astros have been out hit 8 to 4. Chris Carter's 0 for 3. J.D. Martinez on deck. That's a strike to Carter. Rays five, Astros five. We're in the bottom of the eighth inning. Each club has scored three times in the eighth. It's gotten wild here at Minute Maid Park. In game four of this four game series, Bill Brown, Alan Ashby, Julia Morales, July 4th. Come on in and join in the fun. 0 and 1. Carter takes it. It's 1 and 1. Travel day for both these clubs, but there's a ball game to be decided first. Now looking ahead to the ninth inning, Joyce, Sobris, and Fold are due to bat for Tampa Bay. And the Astros are trying to get the lead with Jose Veras warming up for that night. Now it's two and one. Astros have 17 come from behind wins of their 31. That's a little bit high and it's three balls and a strike to Carter. Can't enjoy it yet. Looked like a guy that's done it before. Yeah, he did, didn't he? Carter takes that's ball four, and Chris has drawn his 37th walk of the year. Second walk of the inning for Peralta. If he had gone to the mound, Wallace hit that high mortar shot on a one-two pitch to get it out to right field, and now we get a pitching change. Peralta will be coming out. With J.D. Martinez coming up next. The Rays bullpen, which had been so spectacular over the last several weeks, gives up a three-run lead here in this inning. Joe Matt will be waiting for pitcher number four to arrive from his bullpen. Kyle Farnsworth has been warming up. Peralta taking his lead. With the game tied 5-5 in the bottom of the eighth, one out and a runner at first. Be right here when you come up.
for the second time as a major leaguer has hit two home runs in a ball game. He did it last August 1st, 2012 in Milwaukee, and he's done it today. Takes that fastball away, drives it out to the Crawford boxes in left field. That's what he's shown that he has the most potential to do. Take the pitch away. But then he spins on one. Towering drive just does get out. And they don't count by how far they go. Five five affair Kyle Farnsworth has come out of the bullpen for the Rays and the big right hander faces J.D. Martinez who hit a fly ball to right in the seventh he's two and oh with a five point zero one ERA foul ball strike one with a runner at first Chris Carter and one out thirty first appearance for Farnsworth this year thirty seven years of age and still effective he's allowed four home runs in his twenty three in the third innings. Kept it quick Tuesday night. He was the final pitcher in the eight to nothing Tampa Bay win. Worked a hitless inning with no walks and one strikeout, and he made just seven pitches in that ninth inning Tuesday night. Ground ball and it's backhanded. Here's Escobar throwing to second and the relay to first. Spectacular double play by Escobar and Zobrist on to Loney. And that ends the eighth inning. The Astros tied with three runs on two hits. We move to the ninth, and it's 5 5. Race five Astros five and a big double play end of the eighth inning with J.D. Martinez hitting it sharply but Escobar started a beauty. This didn't look like it had a chance of being a double play. In fact you wondered what Escobar might be able to do with the baseball to start with. But he's got a strong arm he sets up Ben Zobras to pumps it up to first base and they get the double play. And then you reflect back to the Astros defensively in the eighth inning. Did they have a chance at a double play? We'll never know. Escobar really snagged that one and then got his balance and threw strongly to second, where Zobras turned it. Now Jose Veras, 0 and 4 with an ERA of 3.50, comes in in the ninth inning. Score tied at five. And you see what the right-hand hitters have done against him. Very little. 169 the batting average against. Overall 205. So Jose Veras closing out ball games, picking up saves, a role that he was. Never really familiar with coming in, got anointed as the closer, and he's done a nice job. Now it'll be Matt Joyce leading it off here. 5 8 and 0 for the Rays, 5 4 and 0 for the Astros. Eight men left for Tampa Bay, three left for Houston. Joyce has been on twice with a single to right and a walk. Interesting game today. Zobrist on deck. And fold is due up third. That is strike one. 
Jose Cisnero in one inning allowed two hits, three runs, walking two, fanning one. Joel Peralta in one third of an inning allowed two hits, three runs, walking two, with one strikeout. It's one and one. Harris picked up save number 17 last night. One ball and two strikes for Jose in the four to one win. Gave up a two out single to Kelly Johnson. Has converted each of his last nine save opportunities. Typically, a team's closer will come in in the top of the ninth inning at home in a tie game. The Astros have Cedeno, Barnes, and Paredes do up in the bottom of the ninth. Bad. It goes on one hop. Altuve's there. On over to Carter. One out. Now Zobrit. Ferris is pitching for the fourth time in the nine games on this homestand. Has five straight scoreless outings. Overs with a fly ball to left to strike out a couple of ground outs. It's ball one to him. Cubs and Athletics are underway in Oakland. No score. Bottom of the fourth now. A strike and it looks a one and one. The fold on deck. Cardinals and Angels play tonight in Anaheim. It'll be 11 game winner Adam Wainwright against 10 game loser Joe Blanton. Two and one. Mariners are at Texas tonight against the Rangers, Iwakuma and Perez. Alan Ashby will be scouting that game. Only at your mandate, Brownie. That's all I can say to that one. <laughs> Iwakuma has a 2.42 ERA. In the air on the left side, Fred Wallace goes over to foul ground. Two outs. We heard something on the update about uh, Lance Berkman making a big donation to West Texas. Help them uh, buy a fire truck. Okay. Very nice of Lance. Yeah, absolutely. Lance was born in Waco. Grew up in the New Braunfels area. Sam Fold at 200. Has two homers. He's driven in 10. He came in to pinch run for Evan Longoria and scored a run. Wallace in tight at third. And there's strike one for Barris. Sam Fold has appeared in 37 games as a sub this year. And that leads the American League. Fernando Rodney is warming up for the Rays. He's their closer. Somebody uh, load up his quiver with arrows when he's warming up. One one. I think he may uh, take care of that himself, although I've noticed that he's not the only member of the Rays that apparently has a quiver and a bow. Oh, yeah? Well, here in the series, one of the position players I saw actually uh, firing off a shot. That's true, we did see that.
ever get into archery yourself? It's been a shortcoming of mine my entire life. You are kind of a straight arrow. <laughs> Swing and a miss. That's two. You've got too much time coming up on your hands. Oh, right? Right. Well, we had an archer who started the game, Chris Archer from Tampa Bay. So maybe that's why Fernando Rodney does that archery thing. And he gets a save. Julia, there you go, another assignment. <laughs> Got a list way too long already. Inside for a ball. Now it's a full count on fold. And with Loney on deck, you do not expect to see Mr. Veras do anything other than go right after Sam Fold. You're going to give me one of those lids. He struck him out for a one, two, three, ninth inning. Now the Astros try to win it in the last of the ninth. With Cedeno, Barnes, and Paredes do up in just a moment. Ball on Comcast Sportsnet is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at Southwest.com. Bottom of the ninth coming. The Astros are trying for a split of this four-game series with the Tampa Bay Rays. In the first two games, Tampa Bay beat them by a combined score of 20 to nothing. The Astros last night got a measure of revenge, winning at 4 to 1 behind Bud Norris. And today they can gain a split now of this four-game series. If they can win this one bottom of the ninth with Kyle Farnsworth on the mound. He came in with a man on and got a double play ball hit by J.D. Martinez in the eighth. Now Ronnie Cedeno leads it off to be followed by Brandon Barnes and Jimmy Paredes. And that's a foul strike one. Farnsworth pitcher number four for Joe Madden. The Astros have utilized four hurlers as well. Jamie Wright is the latest to warm up in the Tampa Bay pen. Sedano takes a look at it. It's a one ball one strike count. Astros have won six games in their last at bat. Back and it's a one ball, two strike count for Ronnie Cedeno. Our buddy Eric Nadell is out of the action, fighting laryngitis. Ash. Gonna miss Eric up there. Great broadcaster with the Texas Rangers. Did you see the uh, radio guys for? These Tampa Bay Rays are in their shorts traveling today. They said it's their Eric Eric Nadell travel day. Okay. Well, that's their uh, recommended travel attire, right? Yeah, I don't know how the 
what the theme is for the Rays today. I think it's one of their bizarre things. But yeah, the broadcast team on the Eric Nadell Travel Day attire. I think it was the uh, Miami Vice trip, something like that. Oh. College preppy trip. Yeah, we're back to Don Johnson again. <laughs> we just can't get enough Don Johnson. It's two balls and two strikes. You know you can never get enough Don Johnson. Mark Bailey, where are you right now? Foul away. Do we have any uh, witty sayings from the skipper today, Joe Madden? They've been appearing in the Tampa Bay notes the last few days. Well, they had some last night. We'll try to look those up for you. He's a humorous and entertaining guy. <laughs> The air and foul again. Ronnie Cedeno stays alive. Cedeno came in as a pinch hitter in the seventh inning when the lefty Torres was on the mound because lefty hitting Mark Krause had started. Krause went over two. So the remaining pinch hitters available to both quarter are Switch and Carlos Corbran and Matt Dominguez. But they don't care about that. They got a baseball. A little nap time. And the sliders tap foul. That was contentedness. Yes, it was. The picture of contentedness. Mark Appel will pitch tomorrow, as you know. And uh, manager Ed Romero of the Tri City Club in New York says he probably will throw 30 pitches and make another start in five days. That's strike three, and it's out number one. Well, breaking ball, a hanger here. Just freezes Cedeno. 30 pitches, you hope, gets him two innings. Brandon Barnes has authored a walk off hit. He is one for two with a walk in this game. Jimmy Paredes on deck. That's in for strike one from Farnsworth. Well traveled right hander. Boy, has he been durable down through the years with more than 800 major league appearances? That's a line drive left field line and going foul. Oh, and two. Barnes just a little bit out in front. Brandon trying to come up with a big knock here. This is by a little over a couple of feet. Just about to say to you, Brandon, you, you have another big call in you. Yeah. And you have a bunch for the road trip, right? I'm saving up. I've been saving up for the last few weeks. <laughs> and now you get to blow it out. Don't know if that's a yes or a no, but. One and two. Well, you know your buddy uh, Jeff Blum will have all those ad libs saved up in the last uh, what is it three weeks he's been off. He's got a big bag that's loaded. Eight hits for the Rays, four for the Astros. The Astros have made their four hits count. Two of them home runs by Brad Wallace, who driven in four. Two and two. They got a run on a sack fly by Jake Elmore in the fifth inning. There have been six Rays walks in the game. Even Steven now in the ninth. Rays are 20 and 22 on the road. Way outside, and it's a full count now on Barnes. Barnes gets on, there's a pretty good chance he's going. How long has it been that Farnsworth has been tossing up this near 100 mile an hour type stuff? It's he, been a long time. He came into the big leagues in 2000, or 99 rather. This ball four, and now Barnes has taken his second walk. He's on base for the third straight time. Joe Madden's big right hander listed at 6 4. 
as a base runner, and he has Jimmy Paredes batting. Jimmy's 0 for 2 with a walk. Well, that three run eighth inning for the Astros started with a measly walk. Turn that trick again. Farnsworth was a 47th round draft choice in 94. That's hard to believe. Isn't it the guy with this arm, that body size. Yeah. Only had to go over the top of Barnes to take that pickoff throw. Boy, he has been durable consistently over 70 appearances in several seasons. A whole lot of somebody's missed something there. Well, he almost threw that one into the right field corner. He bounced it. Maybe that was the deal for pickoff move. <laughs> the Rays may want to put a halt to that idea. Let's see. Only with a good glove hand saved him a throwing error. And that could have been critical, a mistake at that point. Allowing Barnes to get to at least second and maybe third. When is Dwight Howard coming down from the mountain tomorrow? Talking about the mountains just south of Dallas. Yeah. You guys were talking about earlier. Yeah. I don't know. Is he actually going to have a coming out party and well, notify people what he intends to do? That was the word we were getting earlier today. All the first. Several of the experts thought that uh, Houston was the best choice for Dwight Howard. Is that the most recent assessment? Yeah, but they don't know what he thinks. Well, I don't think that matters, does it? <laughs> swing and a miss there. That's one and one. Good swing by Jimmy. That's what you want to do. Go up there and take that aggressive hack. He just might win a ball game with it. First time he got called up this year. He showed up on the scene that left side of the plate. He was raking. Yeah. Love to see him find that attitude and that physicality, whatever it was that was working. Fans are booing all these pickoff throws on Barnes. Yeah, he was. He was just into that nice groove. Brandon is 8 for 13 in steals this year. Jimmy has a beautiful left handed swing when he has it in sync. Fouls it back and it's one and two. Jimmy better hitter as a left handed batter. He acknowledges that. Certainly hit well again this season at Triple A. Very pleasant young man. You'd love to see his tools. Come together at some point because he does have tools. He hit 340 in 153 at bats for the Red Hawks. And five homers. And 22 runs. How many throws is that over the first down? About 10. There's no limit. Farnsworth maybe acknowledging to himself, just not totally loose yet. Oh, okay. It's the only way you can get your, your warm-up tosses in. Barnes is going. No throw to second base. He steals it standing up. And pitch was ball two, and the count's two and two as Barnes gets his second steal of the game and ninth of the year. Barnesworth tried to be quick to the plate, too. Yeah. And I'm wondering, you know, we talked about all the stolen bases against the Rays this year. If this is a part of what it's all about, uh, Lobatone is not even coming out trying to make a throw here. That was hard to figure. Now a single could win it. It counts two and two. And a strikeout takes care of out number two for Farnsworth. Now Lobatone goes out to talk with Elmore coming up. Elmore has walked twice. He's hit a sack fly. Elmore 
Moore started the game at shortstop, then he moved to left field. And that's been the case in a few games for him, and he had worked on playing the outfield at Triple A Oklahoma City in case the Astros needed him to do exactly what he's doing today. And for a big knock. Elmore takes strike one. Arizona State. Drafted by Arizona. Fly ball left center field. Jennings going for it. Jennings is there for the catch to send this game to the 10th. With the score, Tampa Bay 5, Houston 5 through 9. Extra innings are presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky all season long. Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Feed your wild side. Three game ceremonies on the field with the Astros lined up alongside the military veterans. It's a 5 5 ball game. We go to the 10th inning. And in extra innings, the Rays are 3 and 5. The Astros are 3 and 1. It's James Loney to lead it off. Jose Veras came in in the ninth inning. He had a one, two, three frame, and he stays out for the tenth now. Loney, as a walk and a single, his hitting streak was extended to 15 games back in the fourth inning with that hit to left field. Then twice he's flied out to left field, so Loney has gone the other way every time he's made contact today. Loney tied his career high with that hitting streak. He's up there with Will Myers on deck. And Kelly Johnson's two up third here in the 10th. That's ball one for Varis. A shot off Ferris. It goes out to Altuve. Altuve throws to first, and he gets Loney. And shaking his right hand, Jose Veras. Now he drops his glove. He bends over. He's in some pain. After deflecting that hot shot to Altuve, he appears to be hurting. Certainly saved himself a base hit to start the inning, but was it worth it? Well, that pitcher can get in some tough poses to be able to handle these line shots. That could have only gotten just right on some fingertips the way that looked. It looked that way. Maybe that left leg as well, but it's the, the hand that he's been ringing out. Yeah, it looked like the leg was the real deflection. Yep. He's trying to grip the ball. I'm going to guess it, it 
it hit the fingers, maybe fingertips going by. Left leg appears to be fine, but it looked like he took quite a shot there. Well, last night, Bud Norris got a sharply hit ball right back by his head on through the middle. Watch this line drive. And clearly above that left knee, he took that one, but fingers on the right hand got abused. Meanwhile, Loney really scalded that ball, but that's out number one. It's four straight retired by Vera. Still looking at his right hand. Assistant athletic trainer Rex Jones is out there and patting him on the arm. And he's going to uh, walk off the field. So the Astros will have as much time as the relief pitcher needs, whoever they decide to bring in for Jose Veras. And we'll be right back with a score Rays 5, Astros 5 in the 10th. And click on in game live to enhance your Astros in game experience on your computer, smartphone, or tablet. Get in depth stats and join the social buzz in game live only at CSNHouston.com. Brownie. Thanks, Julia. Well, they're into it. It's a 5 5 game, and Josh Fields has come out of the bullpen. He'll be pitcher number five for the Astros. He comes in for the injured Jose Veras. In 13 games, he has no wins or losses. His ERA is 4.50. Yeah, those are intriguing numbers with the left hand hitters taking the brunt of the, the effort put out by Shields, hitting just 154. The lefties, the righties, 242. This is one of those learning times for Josh Fields. Extra innings, tie ball game. Pitched night before last, Tuesday night, gave up one run and one and two thirds innings. Gave up a homer to Desmond Jennings. He's allowed home runs in three of his last four outings. But he pitched well in the four to three win over St. Louis last week. And now he'll be getting ready to face Will Myers, a right handed hitting outfielder, is one for four. But Fields. Because of the injury to Veris, will get as many warm ups as he needs to be ready. And it appears that he has already reached that number. Now we're getting some Twitter information that Mark Appel likely will make a second start for short season Tri City. That will be July 10th at Mahoning Valley. Like to know, they want to see him up in that part of the world. Might be their only chance to see him in person. Will Myers doubled in the eighth inning, hit that ball to left field, and he came around to score. And Tampa Bay got three. There's ball one from Josh Fields. Ever been to Mahoning Valley, Ash? Wouldn't even know. 
which direction to start the car no. and to get there. Well, if you have one of those cars that will automatically take you there, it's no problem. Save enough. <laughs> the whole one's trying. They'll be, you know, they're coming. Punch in your coordinates. Yeah. Beam me up, Scotty. It's two balls in a strike. George Jetson to be your chauffeur. George would be a very efficient chauffeur, yes. Just it's all in the uh, the voice though of the, <laughs> the voice that you get that gives you the directions. <laughs> That's the real problem. Those GPSs. Three balls in the Could they give us a choice? Oh, you've got a choice. <laughs> Maybe they should have entertainers' voices on. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody Davis Jr. telling you <laughs> telling you where to go. Sean Connery. Or is it really Kevin Bass? <laughs> Three balls, two strikes. Mahoning Valley is in Niles, Ohio. Ash, does that tell you any more than you know? Niles, knew? Ohio. Yeah. Well, okay, so I'm going to go northward. Okay, thanks for the help. You've got to narrow down. I'll see you there at the end of the week. That's a good thing about being a player. Just hop on that bus. You don't even have to know what state you're in. You're just pitching. And most of the time you don't. <laughs> Struck him out looking, and Myers is out number two. In Right over the top, good heater, bottom of the knees. Myers took a step toward first. Now he's back in the dugout, and it's Kelly Johnson batting. Johnson is 0 for 3 with an intentional walk. In tight for ball one. Feels a rule five pick. He was hurt for a couple of months with a forearm strain and now back into the regular mix. And he was out from his last appearance with the Astros April 3rd and then his first one back was June 3rd. High and it goes out to right field. Jimmy Paredes is moving in for it. That ends the top of the 10th. We go to the bottom half, and the Astros have the top of the order due up. Altuve, Wallace with two homers, and Castro in a 5 5 game. Race five, Astros five in the middle of the tenth inning. Pitcher number five comes in for the Rays. These fans watching to see if the Astros can stir up some trouble for Mr. Jamie Wright in the bottom of the tenth inning. In 38 games, he's one and one with a 2.95 ERA. 
We've seen Jamie Wright in the series. And not overly sharp. But coming in, the numbers very good. 95 that ERA, striking out even at his tender age, still just under a man an inning. 204 that opponent's batting average against. Well, he faced two batters Tuesday night. Well, to hit, and he hit a batter, but was not charged with a run. And last night he worked one inning, gave up one hit, no runs. He came in in the eighth inning of the Tampa Bay 4 to 1 loss, gave up an infield hit to Ronnie Cedeno. Now here's Jose Altuve. Altuve singled in the eighth after the walk to Elmore leading off, and they both rode home on the three run homer by Brett Wallace, who's on deck. Wallace has two homers and four runs batted in in this game. Altuve one for four with a run scored. And that is out of play, strike one. Kyle Farnsworth went one and two thirds innings. He allowed no hits, no runs, had one walk, struck out two. Wright has made 14 straight scoreless appearances, covering 12 and two thirds innings since June 6th. Curveball misses, and it's one and one. Wright leads the Rays bullpen in innings pitched with 39 and two thirds. He moved to the bullpen full time in 2008, and since then he's pitched more relief innings than anybody in the majors, almost 400. Upstairs to Altuve. It's a 2-1 count. He's an 18-year veteran with his 10th different major league team. Still looking for his first postseason, though. No active player has gone longer without. Reaching the playoffs. And this is his sixth trade year. He made an opening day roster after going to camp as a non roster invitee. Strike and the count is even at two and two. Good sinking action. There's a look and to see if he could get that count to three and one. Altuve reaches out and taps it backhanded by Wright. And Wright on the stretch by Loney gets him. Loney doing the splits there at first to catch that throw from Wright. Brett Wallace's day. And he's had a day. Solo shot in the fourth inning, Oppo. And then Brownie mentions that earlier home run, and he just turns and yanks one to Wright. Towering drive. Barely get out and bring everybody to their feet. The Astros right back even in this game. Now with Castro on deck, Wallace comes up two for four. He gets a first pitch curveball and it's ball one. Wallace with the four RBIs in this game has a new major league high. Come up with another major league high right here. And to center field. That's hit number three of the game for Wallace. He's aboard for Jason Castro. He employs that high leg kick. Has to generate some pop. Castro is 0 for 3 with a walk in this game. You're wondering about speed on the bench right about now. Matt Dominguez and Carlos Corporan, the only guys that Bo Porter can turn to other than pitchers. Castro looks out at where the players are lined up. Shortstop up the middle, Escobar. Third baseman Johnson well off the line. And the throw goes over to first. Wallace has not attempted a stolen base this year. 
I was wondering if Jamie Wright had not taken a look at the stats. Wallace draws another throw. He's one for two in his major league career in base stealing attempts. Chris Carter's on deck. Castro looks at it and it's ball one. But the thought might be to put Wallace in motion, find a way to get him to third base on a hit by Castro. Diamondbacks lead the Mets there in the 13th. It's 4 3. Diamondbacks. Fouled away. It's one of one. An intriguing NL West race this year. Diamondbacks have been in a long drought as far as wins by starting pitchers, but they bring a two and a half game lead over Colorado and Los Angeles into play today. Pretty remarkable that the Dodgers have gotten that far back in already. It really is. They've won four in a row now, nine of ten. And the Giants are in last place and probably still the favorite in that division, I, I would think, for a lot of people. Yeah. Get this though, the Dodgers have gained on everybody in the last ten games in their division. They've gone nine and one. Well, Arizona's been two and eight, Colorado four and six, San Diego two and eight, and San Francisco one and nine. That's rare. One and nine, that's extremely rare when you're talking Giants baseball. On the two one pitch, it's a strike call. That's a big call. If you thought about running at all, this delivery by Jamie Wright, a big guy, is slow, deliberate to the plate, a guy that you can, you would think, get quite a jump on. Tap foul, still two and two to Castro. Ian Kennedy started for Arizona today, gave the D backs seven good innings, allowing two runs. Dylan G, same numbers for the Mets, seven innings, two runs. They're watching on the Houston bench as the Astros try to pull this one out in the tenth after trailing five to two. Wallace back into first. Dave Clark over to talk with Brett. Astros post game live coming up next. It might be coming up quickly. Castro almost hit by that pitch. He was hit by the pitch. And now runners are at first and second with one out. Jimmy Wright is asking, did he swing? Because if he swung, and we talked about it multiple times of late, it wouldn't matter that he was hit by the pitch. It would be a swinging strike, but clearly Castro kept that bat back. Got hit on the left foot. Now Chris Carter. Carter's over for three with a walk after the game last night when Carter hit two homers and drove in four and Astros four to one win. Joe Madden tweeted about how much power Carter had, how much improvement he had made in his game. Now Chris tries to strike a big blow again and take down the race. He's not gotten the ball out of the infield today. Strike to Carter. Well, there's a first pitch fastball in a game winning RBI scenario, and Carter's taking. <laughs> now 
now it's 0 and 2. JD Martinez on deck. Hanger left up and in. Sometimes those hangers can be the toughest pitch to hit. Cubs and Athletics scoreless. They're in the top of the seventh in Oakland. Wallace looks around as he gets his lead off second. Carter pulls it foul. Still 0 at 2. The Nationals down the Brewers 8 to 5. Bruce Storen got the win over Tom Gorzolani. Rafael Soriano got save number 22. Carter lays off and it's one and two to Chris. Cardinals and Angels play later on in Anaheim. Albert Pujols is over eight in the first two games of that series against his former club. Red Sox beat the Padres eight to two. White Sox down the Orioles three to two. Addison Reed winning that one over Tommy Hunter. Carter foul tips and strikes out. Two outs now. JD Martinez is next. He's all for two. Another breaking ball. This one better than what we've seen earlier in the sequence. And Carter just can't come up with anything. The Royals outslug the Indians in Kansas City 10 to 7. On a grand slam with Lorenzo Kane delivering. Eric Hosmer and George Kataris also hit home runs, giving Luke Hochaver the win. Holland got his 19th save. Ball one to JD. Came off the bench to take over as the designated hitter from Carlos Pena, who was 0 for 2. Yankees down the Twins at Target Field 9 to 5. David Phelps the winner, beating Kyle Gibson. Justin Morneau hit two homers. Fly ball deep right field toward the line into the corner. That ball is going to be foul. Instead of a game winner, it's a foul ball by J.D. Martinez. Made you think Brandon Barnes and that sliced drive down the right field side that beat the Colorado Rockies. This one slicing all the way. Up against that counting. That's a great reaction in the dugout. Don't imagine from there they could see much though as the ball came down. One one is the count. I mean Cedeno on deck. One ball, two strikes to J.D. Martinez. Jamie Wright is pitcher number five. Chris Archer started. He went six. Jordan Miles started for Houston. He went six and two thirds. Top to third base, slowly hit it, hugs the line, and then turns foul. And still a one and two count. Time to dig right about there. Had the look of a ball that was going to find its way foul. From Oklahoma City. It's the ball again. One of two pitches for right so far. Justin Maxwell talking there with Gold Porter. Having a moment on the bench. Hoping to be on that field soon, celebrating a game winning hit.
and a foul ball. Keeps J.D. Martinez alive. Had a ball and two strikes. Jamie Wright. 630 games under his belt in the majors, a starter for 246 of those. 91 wins, 125 losses. That's strike three call, and that ends the tenth inning. For Houston, no runs a hit, two men stranded. We move to the eleventh. Rays five, Astros five. Jack Links, beef jerky. Feed your wild side. Inning number 11 coming up from Houston, Texas. And it's a 5 5 ball game through 10 between the Tampa Bay Rays and the Houston Astros. Tampa Bay got a run in the first. Houston tying it on a Fred Wallace homer in the fourth. And Houston on a sack fly by Jake Elmore in the fifth took a 2 1 lead. The Rays tied it with a run in the seventh. They got three in the eighth. The Astros responded with three in the eighth on another Fred Wallace homer. And it's still 5 5 as Jose Lobatone leads it off here in the 11th inning against Josh Fields. Lobatone got an RBI as he bounced into a force play in the 8th inning. He's one for three with a walk. Here's ball one. We were talking earlier, Ash, about the. Uh, some of the words that Joel Madden has been tossing around with the media. Found their uh, notes from last night, and here they are the Joe Cabulary. Actual words recently used by manager Joe Madden. Ground ball goes foul. I need to hear this Joe Cabulary. Clinician, noun, one who puts on a clinic. On plate blocking skills displayed Monday night, Jason Castro and Jose Lobaton were clinicians behind the plate. Preppyism noun, lifestyle associated with the preppy style of dress, which is what the Rays I think are employing on this road trip. Okay, that's it. Preppyism. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. Pitch there's a ball. It's two and one. Tweet from Joe Madden. Enjoyed creativity of our Hispanic players who stepped up for accidental preppy road trip. Not a lot of preppyism where they come from. Yeah, imagine they said, "What? We're doing what?" Swing and a miss there, and it's two and two for Josh Fields. Godspell adjective, a day-by-day -day status for an injury situation. Evan DHing or playing the field is truly a day-by-day -day Godspell situation, depending on how his foot responds. Hmm. Joe's working it hard. Lobatone fouls it back. Still a 2 2 count for Josh Fields. Never a dull moment around Joe. Did a commercial 
I don't recall who the commercial was for nationally a year or two ago and he was standing around the batting cage watching one of his Rays hang out line drives and at the end of the commercial he says that's a hit. And of course we were all joking with them because in, in baseball vernacular you'd probably stand there and say that's a knock. Mm -hmm. He's something like that and I think he was I think he was embarrassed. He said well I, I told them that but they wouldn't let me go that direction. <laughs> An interesting guy. He is. He got 71 of the Rays personnel to shave their heads last year. That's a leadoff walk, and Lobaton is it boy. Rays personnel. I, I assume that means big league uh, extending into front office and that sort of thing. Players, coaches, and front office staff, including the principal owner Stuart Sternberg, shaved their heads March 15, 2012, as part of a fundraising campaign to benefit the Pediatric Cancer Foundation. Very nice. You know Escobar is the batter. The number nine hitter has a couple of hits and two runs batted in. He had the two run double up on Towles Hill in the eighth inning. Now Bo Porter comes out. What do you talk about here? Of course well, everybody thinks you, you say come on you got to throw strikes. And a lot of times that's what you hear on the hill. Uh, but it's in your your lap right now and here's what you're going to do if you see the bunt we want you covering this base and all that sort of thing. But I think it's the, the sort of stuff that you uh, you work on so much during the spring and. And then it tends to get forgotten a bit. Is Escobar going to be called upon to bunt. Catcher running at first. Tough call there. Wallace is in tight at third base. He's going to creep in even further now on Escobar. Throw going over on Lobaton. I think we've already seen that Lobaton doesn't run all that well. Madden could be using a pinch runner, but he's not. Uh oh, this one's off Castro's mid, and the runner will advance to second base. Both corner infielders were charging, and Jason unable to hold that pitch from Fields. That gets Lobaton to second base. I don't know if this one falls in that category of another cross up here, but it is a pass ball. Boy, that just beat Jason up. The glove went above the ball. The ball appeared to hit right off that heel of the glove. Mm -hmm. Cost his wrist a little bit, and now pass ball, as you see, is the ruling. So now runner at second and nobody out with a 1 0 count. That changes things. Escobar takes a look at ball two. Here's where I would potentially expect to see the, the bunt, but that just ate up Jason Castro. And he didn't react like a guy. After the play, thinking, "Boy, we need to go talk about these signs." He just looked like a catcher that that got abused on a pitch. Foul back. Two balls, one strike to Yunel Escobar. And Josh Fields has some work to do with a runner at second and nobody out. The Rays have stranded eight. The Astros have left six today. Astros have lost six consecutive July 4th games. They trailed this one 5 to 2. Came back to tie it in the 8th. That one goes deep to right field into the corner, and that'll score the go ahead run. Escobar into second, an RBI double scoring Lobaton. 6 to 5, Tampa Bay. Joe Madden knows his personnel, by the way, Brownie. And one of the things to know right there is Yunel Escobar is an excellent opposite field hitter. And he just waits, tries to hit it to right, and in this instance, lines it down the right field side. It's his second double of the day, his third hit. Three RBI game for Escobar, giving him 36 this season. Six to five lead for Tampa Bay. 
now with Escobar at second and nobody out it's Desmond Jennings. Jennings has three hits. Number one hitter the number nine hitter each with three of the nine. Strike for Fields. Fields in relief of the injured Jose Veras. Veras leaving after that tenth inning drive by Loney the liner back through the middle it apparently it uh, whistled right underneath his fingertips and, and touched his fingertips and deflected off his leg out to Altuve who took care of the out. That pitch is up. It's one and one. Fields has not had a decision in his 13 major league appearances. Astros have Sedeno, Barnes, and Paredes due up in the bottom of the 11. Strike there makes it one and two. Escobar was dancing off second. These two teams will be meeting again next weekend. A week from tomorrow night. In St. Petersburg. First of all, three in Texas and two at St. Louis before they get to that series. It's two balls, two strikes with the Rays back home tomorrow night. Jeremy Hellickson will take on Dylan Axelrod of the Chicago White Sox. And they'll catch Chris Sale Saturday night with Matt Moore opposing him. Then David Price squares off against John Danks on Sunday. While the Astros are taking all the Rangers. Lucas Harrell and Nick Tepish tomorrow night in game one at Arlington. In the air to right field. Paredes with the catch. He's the tag by Escobar. He'll move to third base. One out. In essence that same fly ball we saw earlier in the game with Paredes at second base and Paredes chose not to get back to the bag early and tag up and move very easy here for Escobar. And now Bo Porter comes out. He has action in his bullpen. He may want lefty on lefty Joyce is due up Joyce is one for four with a walk Wesley Wright's been warming up. There's the tag by Escobar. And there will be a change here as Fields walks off the mound. And Wesley Wright is heading in. Matt Joyce, two up next. We'll be back with that in just a moment. Stay tuned for Post Game Live presented by MD Anderson, making cancer history. Well, these fans have watched a back and forth game. The Astros at one point led two to one, and it was five to two Rays. The Astros tied it. Now it's six to five Rays. Wesley Wright comes in with a man on. 
And that runner's at third, so the infield is in with one out as he comes in with an 0 2 record and a 420 ERA. 39th appearance. And Wesley Wright. Done a nice job not walking people this year, but time now to come on in and get the pinch hitter. Sean Rodriguez heading for Matt Joyce to give Joe Madden a right handed batter. 258 for Rodriguez, two homers. He's driven in 14. Bounces back by the mound. Play is made by Sedano at shortstop, and the runner holds the third on out number two. Right on one pitch gets Rodriguez. Now Zobris. Wonder if Bo Porter felt that Wesley Wright was the more likely candidate, along with Fields, to get that ground ball. Well, that's quite possible. Had to anticipate that a right hand batter would come to the plate. You know that. Ben Zobrist is 0 for 5 in this game. Strike one for Wesley. Right-handed hitters are hitting 297 against Wesley. In the dirt for a ball, it's one and one. Wesley worked an inning in a third Monday night. He did not give up a hit, struck out three. Six of his last seven outings have been scoreless. He's in the top 11 in appearances. In the American League with 38 coming into this game. It's one and two for Wesley. Well, the Lakers have made their pitch to Dwight Howard. His decision expected soon. Kobe Bryant and others have talked with him. All the way, emphasizing his opportunity to win there, but some of the experts think that he would have a better opportunity to win in Houston. James Harden, Chandler Parsons. How healthy is Kobe Bryant going to be, and how soon? That's one big question. You're right. And how much longer can he be productive when he is healthy? Oh. It's a close one and it's two and two. Trying to spot this inside edge, put it right where your catcher wants it. And can't get the call. That one gets by, and the runner will come home to make it seven to five on a wild pitch. Oh, it's been a pass ball and a wild pitch in the inning. And both have figured prominently in these two runs scoring. Yeah, you look for that all out blocking position. That is not it. Breaking ball called, breaking ball thrown in the dirt. And not easy, but not the way you draw it up either. Now 3 2 to Zobrist. And that is strike three. Well, the Rays get two in the eleventh inning on one hit, and they go to the bottom of the eleventh with a seven to five lead.
trying to make it three wins in a four game series and they brought in their closer Fernando Rodney. They've also left in Sean Rodriguez who pinch hit for Matt Joyce in the top of the 11th inning. He's the left fielder now. And Rodney who was fantastic last year in closing out games has five blown saves this year to tie for the high mark in the American League. He's three and two with a 4.41 ERA 17 saves and 22 opportunities. 152 career saves so he's got plenty of experience in this role. But even the guys that have been around a long time unless everybody beside Mariano Rivera will have those times when you're just struggling closing them out and the Astros would love to provide one of those times. Rodney a year ago was an all star with 48 saves and 50 opportunities for the Rays. 36 years old formerly with the Detroit Tigers he has been with the Angels as well. He signed it as a free agent. Prior to last year with his Tampa Bay Club. That year you talked about last year with the 48 saves. He worked over 74 innings and allowed just 43 hits. He was fantastic. Ronnie Cedeno leads it off. Jamie Wright is in a position to be the winning pitcher. He worked one inning, allowing one hit, no runs. He had no walk, struck out two, hit a batter. Ronnie's pitcher number six for Joe Madden today. Rally caps are on as the Astros come up against it. Rodney walked 15 last year in 74 innings, striking out 76. And uh, attracted the attention of Miguel Cabrera over last weekend. And the Tigers were in town at the Trop. For throwing a pitch up and in. There's strike one. So Daniel's 0 for 2. Rodney's converted his last eight save opportunities since May 27th against Miami. He picked up a win Saturday against Detroit. Or two innings to get that one. It's one and one. In this series, Tampa Bay Rays have hit very well with runners in scoring position 14 for 42 at 333. The Astros 3 for 18. A lot more opportunities with men on base, obviously, for the Rays in this series. Two and one for Rodney. Fields in uh, one inning allowed one hit and two runs walking one fanning one. Third baseman Johnson just about even with the bag Cedeno takes. Now it's three and one Astros need a base runner to get the potential tying run to the plate. So anyway Ronnie Cedeno can find work his way on base will be certainly acceptable now with a three one count Johnson is backed up at third. And he's only walked four in his last 14 outings. Make it five now in the last 15. Lead off walk to Cedeno. Walk number eight for the Rays pitching staff in this game. And then Barnes. Has two of those eight walks. He also has a single. He's reached base three times in a row. A couple of stolen bases today for Brandon. Very good day for him. That's strike one at 96 to Barnes. Jimmy Paredes is on deck. Derek Cheater saying he thinks that he is close to going out on a rehab assignment now. Foul back. No balls, two strikes. Well, they're now in the 14th at City Field, Diamondbacks four, Mets four. Newman Heights hit his second home run. Cubs and Athletics are in the middle of the eighth inning, one nothing Oakland. Check swing call. Goes the Astros way. One and two on Barnes. 
Dan Straley started for Oakland against the Chicago Cubs. He gave up one hit and no runs in seven innings. Ryan Cook's in there now. Travis Wood started for the Cubs. Six shutout for him. Outside to even the count of two and two. This is the high for walks in a game for the Astros this year. Previous high was six. Well, you hate to lose a game where you draw eight walks. Foul over by Jimmy Paredes in the on deck survey. Yeah. Uh, opportunities with those free base runners. The Astros have bounced into two double plays. And both came right after bases on balls. They have left six men on base. Now it's three and two. Cole Hamels won his third against 11 losses for the Phillies. They down the Pirates at PNC Park, six to four. Beat Garrett Cole. He took his first loss as a major leaguer. He's four and one. Jonathan Papelbon got saved number 17. White Sox beat the Orioles three to two in Chicago on a walk-off homer in the ninth by Adam Dunn. Barnes is down on strikes. One out in the home 11th. Off speed out in front, Brandon Barnes. Oftentimes, quite wise to try to get that first, maybe part of the plate fastball and see if you can drive it facing a guy like Rodney. Paredes is 0 for 3 with a walk. Bounces one and it took a bad hop. There's Zobris throwing to second. That ball really took a funny move off the grass. Zobris was moving to his left. He had to stop, reach back the other way, and then he got it onto Escobar for a 4 6 play for out number two. Not a bad job. If you're the Rays, you're Real realistically looking to get one out on that play anyway. Lovers took it on the short hop, got it on to Escobar. Two outs now. Paredes on it first, and it's Jake Elmore batting. Elmore is 0 for 1 with a sack fly and a pair of walks. Altuve on deck. Strike for Rodney. Giants and Reds rained out today in Cincinnati. No makeup date has been announced. That's line and caught at third base by Johnson for the final out. Giving the Rays three wins in this four game series. Rodney's celebrating. Save number 18 for him. A win for Jamie Wright. And the Astros gamely fought this game to extra innings. After tying it with three in the eighth on the Brett Wallace homer, his second of the game. But in 11, it's the handshakes for the Tampa Bay side of the field, and the Rays win it 7 to 5 in 11.